Hi, and welcome to Radical Soda's Season 1 compilation. Uh, I thought I would sneak this out while I'm working on uh, larger projects, very long videos, so here I am. I didn't want to just slap all my videos together and, you know, kind of leave it at that. Uh, I thought it would be fun if I could have a little chat before each video and let you guys know, like, what sort of mindset I was uh, having going into it. Like, maybe there'll be a funny story or maybe there's some problems with the video. And I mean, these were my first attempts at making proper scripted stuff. So there are going to be a few problems. Weirdly enough, my first released video uh, was not a Radical Soda review, as you would call it. Uh, instead, it was this little show I wanted to put out beforehand called Speed Run Honey Bun, which I called it that because, hey, it rhymed. Uh, and I couldn't think of anything else that rhymed with Speed Run. This was an idea I had a long time ago, uh, back when I was maybe 17, 18, uh, in animation college. And I thought it would be fun to maybe do this with a friend, uh, where we speedrun a game that, you know, maybe there's some sort of special condition for. Maybe we don't know the game at all, or blindfolded, or randomizer, you know, that sort of stuff. I, th I thought that could be cool. I'm sure most of those ideas would have come to fruition eventually, uh, if I had continued the speedrun honey bun videos, but... I realized that people were gravitating more to the Radical Soda videos, you know, you know how it is. And uh, generally, I just kind of went further and further away from that sort of show, and even the speedrun honey buns eventually lost the speedrun aspect to them. I just <laughs> just completely <laughs> forgot the timer one time, and I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. I think I chose Super Mario World for my first speedrun honey bun video because, I mean, it's simple, easy to uh, wrap your head around, just something, uh, a nice little test for the first video. I don't mean everybody likes Mario, right? Well, Nintendo loved my video so much that they put a copyright claim on it, so that was great. It was actually taken away a few years later when they had their whole YouTube reorganizing thing happening, which is nice. I'm, I'm happy at least that they're not, you know, claiming people's videos for no bloody reason anymore. Anyway, please enjoy this video if you can. I can't. I went through it and I was just thinking it was <laughs> holy moly, but I guess that shows how much I've changed uh, over the years. And even though I will come back to this video maybe in five or so years and say, holy moly, what was I thinking? What a, What's my hair doing? Am I really this slow? I, I figured I was a little higher up here. I look like an old man. What's, what's going on with this hair? Hey, how's it going? It's me, Radical Soda, coming to you from across the room. It's, this is a series where I speedrun a game I haven't even beat before. I mean, look at this guy. Pathetic. It's like he doesn't even know what a speedrun is. As you can see here, I've uh, been doing a bit of practice and preparation for this video. Uh, but, oh, oh, right, we're in. Start the timer, Frank. All right. Hold on a second. There's something wrong with me. It won't. It won't let me- Come on, you idiot game! I gotta go! The time has started! Alright, so a lot of people tell you that- <laughs> Okay, so what most people will tell you is that the fastest way to go is to the right. But you see, there's actually a secret to help speedrun the game. And that's on the left here, which many people don't know about. You see- Frank, restart the timer. Now you see, there's a secret behind the level, you see. Now, the vast majority of Mario players will go their whole lives without- Now the secret- the... I'm probably one of the few who actually know about it. Fuck it! Fuck this shit! We're going right! Hey, hey here we are, Green Hill or whatever the hell it's called. All right, here we Oh, no, we need the shell for the Koopas. No, all right, that's cool. That's fine, too. Don't need the shell anyway. That's what speedrun's all about, folks. Uh, intuition. Oh, shit, I missed a block. Nah, I don't need it. Oh, but what if it's something good? No, 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 I gotta get a good time. Oh, but what if it's a mushroom? You, I mean, you know me. I love my mushroom soup. <gasps> it's Bowser! Dang it! Come on! Darn it! Fuck! The other folks, 19 seconds! You see, in order to get such a great score, you really gotta, you really gotta know the level like the, the, back of, the back of your hand. Alright, we're making good time, we're making good time, let's go, let's go, let's go, level 2! Restart the timer, Frank. Okay, you know what? I feel real bad that I didn't show you guys the speedrunning secret. So we're just gonna... No? Okay, you 
Okay, last try, last try. I'm doing it! I'm doing it! Look at me go! Ooh, a mushroom! <laughs> you know me. I love mushroom. Fuck! Checkpoint shit. Got it! You see, a speedrunner must also know how to speed read. This is common knowledge, of course, in the speedrunning community. Now watch me Matrix dodge this Banzai Bill. Yeah, baby! Whoa there, fellas. Don't get too excited. And here it is, ladies and gentlemen. The speedrunning secret. It's coins! Coins! Hallelujah, brother! <laughs> ah, no, we still gotta go through this level. No problem. Watch me go! Done. Can't expect all of you to know what happened there. It's one of my uh, many speedrunning techniques. Very advanced. See, look at this! Secret skip right here, folks! Now, there should be a hidden block here. Uh, or here. Or here. He didn't jump. He didn't jump. He didn't fucking jump! <gasps> it's Bowser again! See you next Christmas, Bowser! Checkpoint! Damn it! Mushroom! Ah! Next level! My skill knows no bounds. <laughs> There's nothing I can. What? Hello? I, I, I can't move! I can't- Mario! Go! Go, Mario! Stop spin jumping and freaking move! I knew all along you could do it, Mario. You mean me and you. We're, we're trying on two brothers. Uh, two brothers, yes. Two brothers. You just found out. Uh, two brothers. Uh, <coughs> two brothers. Now I'm gonna show you all another very advanced Super Mario World technique. You see, the foot- ah! Now this very advanced technique can only be performed by professionals. So- Ooh, mushroom. <laughs> hey! Okay, so this technique is- Oh. No! Oh, no. This is it, folks! The secret technique! Only try to perform this if you're a Super Mario professional. Like me. Shit. Now on to the boss, and you'll see here that the great thing about Mario is that all you gotta do is jump on its head. Ah, uh, yeah. Yeah, jump on, it, jump on its head. It's not, it's not dying. What? Why isn't it dying? Why isn't it dying? I... Well, at least one of us died. <coughs> There you have it, folks. We have finished Super Mario World. Ha! You thought it'd be that easy? Even for a master like me, there are still more levels. What's that? We're gonna... We're gonna Donut Land. You know what this means. Man, Super Mario World was far ahead of its time. I'm just wondering where the donuts are. Oh, no, there they are. You know, it was a cool donut plane, but I couldn't see any. Couldn't see any. Oh, God. Here it is, folks. Just kidding about that last part. Here's the real donut planes. Although, personally, no donuts are in plain view. Okay. I didn't want to do this. But you left me no choice, uh, Pitchin' Chuck. It's time for my ultimate move, my special technique! Here we go! It's time for my ultimate move, my special technique! Here we go! Ah! And that's why you don't miss with Mark. A C? A fucking C? That's more like it. At least with a B, I can make shitty memes. I guess you could say it's time for me to become one with the sky, you see, bud? Next level, now there's many a secret on this level, one of them being right in this pipe here. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I am supreme champion of the Simpsons skateboarding. In fact, I've locked every character. Get in the keyhole, you stupid. Just go in the fucking... Oh. Now you see the extra secrets open up in the over- But wait. It's green. Well, folks, you know what this means. SOMEBODY- Now, the way to complete this part is actually very simple. You just follow the corridor down until you reach the end. Uh, huh. Well, I guess it's the only way to go. Okay! ho oh, I was wrong, I admit. Uh, but it's all part of the learning here. Now, here is the real-
tank, reset the timer. Okay, back to donut planes. I shouldn't have a problem with- WHAT THE FUCK IS GOING ON?! Ah, Super Mario World is just a pleasure to speedrun. I mean, many people nowadays say that it's one of the most rewarding uses of your time. Back to this place, but hey, it's okay, because I have the shell, which I can throw at enemies in order to protect myself. Fuck you, you piece of shit, go to hell. He's dead now. <laughs> now, I still don't expect all of you to understand what's happening here, but I'll assure you that this technique is making speedrunning history. And here we have the donut ghost house. <sighs> Fucking donut ghost house, let's go. Hey, wait a minute. These aren't donuts at all! What the moly holy, Sakurai! Shovel Knight should have been put in Smash Brothers Crusade! A fun fan game you can play with friends. As you can see, I'm playing as the best character, uh, Street Fighter. So I have a P-block, but I don't exactly know what to do now. And I'm clearly running a little bit behind in the general speedrunning time. Maybe I can go through this door. No, no, I, I guess I'll grab the same P-block from before. Looks like the price of salad has gone up. No, stop that. that. That wasn't even good. Darn it! Shit! Oh! Okay, I've got one shot. One last hope. My last save is all the way back in Don't Starve, so I can't mess this up. Ladies and gentlemen, this is it. This is the end of the game. Every single step I've done up to this point has all been working towards a glitch which puts you towards the end of the game. Now, this means that we have officially completed Super Mario World with the GBA. Thank you. Thank you very much. If you want to see me speedrun your favorite game, then there'll be a straw. That's a little better, isn't it? <laughs> Wasn't that fun? <laughs> Just what a spectacular time we had just there. Anyway, next up is my first ever actual Radical Soda video. I had some other sort of reviews before this, but uh, I figured it would be best to start off a proper series with my favorite Sonic game. Looking at the runtime of this video, I realize I probably should come back to this game at some point, maybe some sort of anniversary video, do another Heroes review. Uh, I mean, 15 minutes for this. Not likely, man. For this first Radical Soda video, the only camera I had to work with was my old Logitech webcam, and uh, I'll be honest, I'm still using it to this day because webcams don't seem to progress, really. Uh, like, in the last 10 years, like, I, I went on a site and I looked at it, like, oh, what's, the, what's the best webcam I could get? Because my webcam's kind of crappy, and they're like, oh, hey, what about this Logitech webcam? I'm like, that's the one I have! It's me! Since this video of 100 percent Sonic Heroes on Steam... On Steam? On Stream. I wish. I've done the A-Ranks, Expert Mode, everything. It's all done. Uh, so, uh, it would be neat to uh, have another revisit to this game. Especially since I played the PC version in this video. And I... It's kind of silly, because it's got... It's, it's basically unfinished, so... Uh, maybe it'd be cool to go through all the different versions and see what sort of differences they have. I know the... Uh, uh, GameCube and Xbox version is basically the same, but the PS2 version, on the other hand, the one I had as a kid... Ooh, mama! Even the PS3 version has differences. It has the the, the E stuck in, like, Egg Hawk and stuff, and I, I mean... <laughs> Everyone plays games like this in the movie, so this is how games must be being played. Oh, hey! Welcome to Radical Soda! Right now I'm, uh, pretending to play a game, so I have some sort of, uh, intro for my video- <laughs> I'm creating some sort of intro for my video, so it looks like I have some sort of professional quality, you know. I'm not joking, there's nothing on the screen. Hey. I'm still here. There's a reflection of the TV. Hey. Today we're gonna be looking at the big one. Oh, that was fucking perfect! Yep, it's my favorite game of all time, Sonic Heroes. So, why do I find this game so great? Well, let's pop it in and find out, shall we? Oh no! I guess today we'll be looking at the PC version of Sonic Heroes. I have no idea what he's saying. Let's just be thankful it's not the prototype version. Oh 
man, this tune is so nostalgic. Oh, it just makes me want to get up and run. You know what? That's what I'm gonna. That's what I'm gonna do. Sonic Heroes utilizes a team-based system. Imagine each one has a different difficulty. There's Normal, Hard, Easy, and uh, Shadow the Hedgehog. The whole game, just slap it on there. You get two games in one, who's complaining? Each team has their own story campaign, each with their own reasons for starting this marvelous adventure. Team Sonic gets a letter from Eggman, who mails it to them, I guess. Tails and Knuckles jump out of a moving airplane, which flies off to who knows where, and they're on their way. Meanwhile, Rouge sneaks into Eggman's base to find his secret treasure, and ends up finding Shadow instead, sleeping in a green liquid tube thing. Omega tries to murder them both, but they all end up friends and form Team Dark, so they can track down Eggman and Omega can kill him for sealing him in that very room. Yeah, I know, it's a little bit... dark. What, you thought I'd stop there? Now, in order to take this joke further, all I need is a black guy. Team Rose, on the other hand, has a much less violent story. Amy is craving some of that sweet, sweet Sonic booty, and finds him in a newspaper, apparently dragging with him Froggy and Chocola, another one of Cream's chow. So they all set off to find him, I guess. And finally, Team Chaotix are here because they need to pay the rent. What do you mean the joke's already been made? Some call me Johnny. You son of a bitch. Once you've picked your team and watched the cutscene, you're thrown into the first level. For Team Sonic, Dark and Chaotix, at Seaside Hill. But for Team Rose, there's an extra tutorial level to help you get started. Oh, that's nice. It's always nice to have an extra level. Hello! I'm Bulldog! Ah! Each character has their own special moves and abilities, like Sonic's Tornado or Knuckles' Slam Dunk. I especially like it when Knuckles says shit sure. and Tails goes Wee! I can listen to this all day. Another cool thing Sonic Heroes does is have characters interact with one another. It really makes the experience even more enjoyable than it already is. How's that possible? Who knows? Let's listen to what Sonic and Tails and Knuckles have to say. A sea palace. Looks like I'm ready to take them out. Although for some reason the audio isn't mixed very well in this version. Sorry Tails, what? Knuckles, what did Tails say? What? Oh, whatever, I'll just keep playing. Sonic, you sure this is the right way? I saw Shadow when Eggman hit this way. This All joking aside, I really do like this game, but there is just one thing that is, is not so great. Coming back to this game after a while, I thought that the Team Chaotix missions were the ones which were going to make me the most agitated. The Torch mission springs to mind. But when I realized that I missed one at the end of the level, it wasn't because the game hid it from me, it was because I was stupid. No, it was Team Rose. Not only does this team have to stop extremely often to press and pull switches other teams don't even have in their levels, I swear this team has bugged up the ass. Let's have a look at some of the times they made me want to die.
I died before the level started. You know what, something occurred to me just now. I don't play Sonic Heroes because of the gameplay. It may seem odd that the gameplay is one of the lesser things I look forward to when playing this game, but that might just be because I've played it so much. What I'm doing when I play Sonic Heroes is listening to the music and appreciating the level themes. It's the closest 3D Sonic game to being anything like the classics when it comes to this. Just finished Mystic Mansion, now we're 100,000 feet in the air! No cutscene, no explanation, nothing. You're here now. Play. Look at those giant fish ships. Well, there's even a, even a sawfish one. Isn't that nice? I mean, you've got your classic platformer tropes like the beach level, the forest level, the desert level, but each one has its own unique flair, a unique twist. It's not like Mario where it's really just a desert. I mean, look at this! You're miles up over a giant canyon, grinding on rails, being shot out of cannons, and just listen to that music! That ain't no desert music! Now, I'm not saying the gameplay is bad, of course. Like, it does its job well, apart from Team Rose. I mean, the levels are centered around the three main mechanics, power, flight, and speed. I will admit that the speed characters tend to be a little slippery, and that's why I always switch to flight if I ever feel like I might not land a certain jump, but it's all a matter of switching between characters to keep the flow going. It's a little harder to do that with Team Rose and Chaotix, though, as unlike Knuckles and Omega who slide around when they punch, Mr. Big and Vector stop to shoot their teammates out. Now, this is more helpful in, like, the robot storms, but other than that, I find it kind of annoying. They don't ever get the same invincibility frame, so once you stop and you send out a teammate, you go to grab them up again, you can get hit by an enemy, and it's, yeah, uh, it's just, just not as good as shit. Oh, and did I mention that the power class treats the teammates like shit? I didn't, did I? Well, they do. Knuckles not only wears Sonic and Tails' gloves, but he also smacks them into the ground. Omega straight up shoots them out of his cannon arms, Big hurls them with his fishing pole, and Victor keeps them in his mouth! Jesus, man! Can you imagine the saliva? Hey man, you got any towels? Yeah, they're in the bathroom. Why? What the hell happened to you? Team Chaotix. Oh. Can we talk about the music again for a second, please? You know a game has good music when you're just sitting on the level selection screen and you're having a good time. Speaking of having a good time, Shadow seems to be enjoying hugging himself there. Every team also has got their own victory post when they finish a level, and Team Roses is my favorite by far. Dad, give us all your money! Help me! Oh, no, don't arrest me! Fuck you! Now there are a few bosses too, but you can clearly tell they weren't the main focus, so they're not too serious. Death to the evil one. Prepare to die, Eggman. Jesus, calm down, SPO. So those bosses are fine, but what the hell is with rival battles? In the PS2, and I'm assuming GameCube and Xbox versions of the game, you can finish off the opposing team in about 10 seconds, which makes sense, as that's around the A-Rank criteria. On the PC, though, these assholes just won't die. They have about 10 seconds of invincibility frames after you hit them, and they only fly like two feet at a time, and they don't get stunned either. Look at this. I'm stuck on the ground, and I'm still getting hit. But when I try to hit him, he just gets right back up. It's bullshit, that's what it is. I'll never be able to get an A rank on these fights because of this. And you can't tell me you got a team fucking blast 30 seconds and that's fucking cheating. Okay, I just had to get that out there, all right? So let's say you finished each team story. You've turned Eggman into a puddle of goop. You've recaptured Froggy and Chocola. You found the real Eggman who's been locked in a room. Hold on, what the hell is going on here? Well, in order to figure out that, you've got to collect all seven Chaos Emeralds, which are hidden in special stages, similar to that of Sonic 2. Too bad the controls suck ass. Look at me go, I'm shaking like a method act. How am I supposed to control this? To be perfectly honest, even with the funky controls you have, they're still better than the special stages in Sonic 2. No, seriously, I must be the only person in the world who can't even pass the second special stage in that game. Oh, but I got into my You Should Play Sonic 2 video. That was cheating! I cheated! I'm sorry! What the fuck? How'd I get in front of the Emerald? I swear the special stages are glitched up the arse in the PC and PS2 version. Boosting doesn't make you go any faster because you're already running at the top speed for some reason. Look at the GameCube version! Oh, let's just go for a good old jog down here. Oh, look! How lovely. I got the Emerald. Now look at the PC version. HOLY SHIT WE GOT THROUGH BUNCH THROUGH BUNCH THROUGH BUNCH STOP SLOW DOWN! I tried the 6th special stage 5 times without any success. And then on my 6th try, when all I did was run on the roof, I got the emerald! To get to the special stages, you gotta find a key in the 2nd act stages. Like Ocean Palace, Power Plant, and Bingo Highway. And take it to the goal without getting... hit. I swear, this doesn't usually happen. 
Once you get all the Chaos Emeralds, you can finally play the last story. Unfortunately for me, the very first time I unlocked this, my Sonic Heroes save corrupted or something, and I had no audio in the cutscenes anymore. It was odd, to say the least, but at least now, we can watch them in glorious HD! Oh, God! So it turns out Metal Sonic was behind all of this. Every Eggman you fight, every robot you face, they were all under Metal Sonic's control in order for him to get everyone's DNA. So that means in this game, we've officially fought Eggman zero times. In fact, we actually got tricked into helping him, so this might be the only Sonic game where we've just helped Eggman the entire game. That's pretty crazy. I don't think there's another Sonic game like that, guys. I think this is a one of a kind game. You can't get this game anywhere else. Just help Eggman, the game. This means Sonic's DNA, the ultimate life form's DNA, uh, Froggy, who's been tainted by chaos, so he gets the chaos data, and what did they get from Team Chaotix? I don't know, fucking ninja powers, I guess. Spirits unite. So with everyone's DNA copied, it allows Metal Sonic to transform into a hideous robot monster with an incredibly long transformation time. I mean, the animators had a field day with this one. They went above and beyond, believe me. So after we getting Metal Madness, that's his new name, I guess, as Team Rose, Chaotix, and Dark, Metal Sonic sprouts wings and assumes his final form, Metal Overlord. <coughs> Sonic and Co. use the... <laughs> can, you, can you do that burp with, with, with Vector? <coughs> Sonic and Co. use the Chaos Emeralds to become their super forms and... Whoa, hold on here. So Sonic goes super, and, but Tails and Knuckles get these stupid golden bubbles. I mean, the last time we saw Tails and Knuckles go super was, of course, in Sonic 3 and Knuckles. And that was with the help of the Super Emeralds. But they haven't been seen since that game. So why not just let them go super? Is it so only the hedgehogs can go super? But then where's Amy's super form? Is it only male hedgehogs? Then where's my fan character, Sinos the Fleech Flog? That could just be left out. I don't think that's needed to be in the video. Oh well, at least Knuckles can hurl giant lava balls. That's always cool. Oh, and another thing to mention, this final boss music kicks ass! It's the only stage or boss music to have lurks, and that makes it even more epic than usual! Oh man, this makes me feel like... like I could go super! I did it. Hey there, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video, Robert, make sure- you've got to complete the game. Gerard the Completionist? You have to get all A ranks, Robert. You have to do it. Hmm. I already do have most of them, so... Ah, what the hell, let's do it! Wow, wasn't that just swell? Uh, <laughs> the next video I made was another speedrun, Honey Bun, and it was on a party game that I played by myself. <laughs> what a what a what a good choice! I don't get why I wanted to play Sonic Shuffle so badly. I guess it's just because it was a Sonic game I'd never played before, but I didn't realize that you needed the game, uh, game, game. Uh, <laughs> I didn't realize you needed the game to play the game. But I didn't realize you needed the Dreamcast controller to actually properly play the game because it shows the cards and all your little tidbits and things you can't show to other players straight on the controller on that little tiny screen that it has. Uh, so uh, there was a lot of confusing moments that I had that I tried to kind of skim over in the, in the video, but uh, overall it was kind of a mess. The fact that it is overwhelmingly bizarre uh, as far as a party game goes, though, did make for some funny moments, which I did appreciate. The, uh, the, the, the Sasquatch comes to mind. Uh, <laughs> just, I don't remember any... <laughs> I barely remember anything about the game. It just, it just it evaporates from my mind when I try to think about it, but this... The Sasquatch is one of those things that just stays with you. Uh, please enjoy. 
or don't. Uh, I included timestamps for a reason, so if you want to skip to a specific video or something you're interested in hearing my thoughts on, you can do that. Uh, and I'll, I'll see you back here with my hairy microphone. I hope you enjoy that $3 of ad revenue, Nintendo. Spend it on something nice. Like a noose. Welcome to Speedrun Honey Bun, everyone. This time we're speedrunning the critically acclaimed sequel to Sonic's Bible Adventure, Sonic Shuff... Sonic... Sonic Shuffle? It's Sonic Shuffle, everyone! Personally, I wanted to play something like The Legend of Zelda, but I think I'll stave off the Nintendo games for now, if you know what I mean. Is it cause you're cracking down on emulators, Nintendo? Because I own the game! As well as Majora's Mask, Paper Mario, and... Uh... We're here to speedrun Sonic Shuffle for the Dreamcast. Start the timer! Uh-oh! Sonic's room. Huh. Yes, this does appear to be Sonic's room. Sonic, buddy, eh? I think you might be missing some of the core components of a bedroom. Like a bed. Or anything for that matter. I I is that an aquarium? Where's the fish? Where's anything? Where do you live? I is this what you do when you finish an adventure? You just sit in that chair and do absolutely nothing until the world needs saving again with your only knowledge of time passing in the outside world being your clock ticking away and away and you just getting more and more insane as you stay lifelessly in the wall? Alone? Amy seems to enjoy it though. Looks like the only entertainment Sonic has is this book. Let's check it out. Another story? How about another game, please? Oh shit, is that the time? I gotta get playing! Oh. Oh my. This is a little more grim than I would have imagined. Uh, I guess I'll go with Knuckles. <laughs> ah! Fuck. Wait, I can pick how hard they are in story mode? Well, I guess a well-rounded team is probably the best option here. Tails hard, Sonic normal, and Amy easy. I can't see how this could backfire at all. Huh! What's going on? Is this the afterlife? Where's Dumbledore? Ah. Ouch! Sonic! Best animation of 2017, folks! Well, one thing's for sure, we stumbled into a very strange place. Y yeah, you sure did, Sonic. Again, can I just point out that the only idle animation any of the characters have is Tails as Tails? <laughs> Who are you? Whoa there, Sonic! She's like a foot tall! Don't get any fucking ideas! This is the Temple of Light. Temple of Light? God damn it, it's like even the game knows I want to play Zelda. Void. Sorry, what? What was that, Sonic? Void. Boy? Void. Please, please help me. I need your help. I need to gather the pieces of the precious stone. We got you, girl. Don't worry. I'm a speedrunning master. I'll get you your magic gems back. No sweat. By playing board games. No, I don't need the fucking rules. Okay, what do I do? Oh, something's happening. Scares. Uh, okay, let's see. We have, uh, we've got a poker Game Boy screen, cards, and rock. I'll go for the Game Boy. Ah, shit. Computer speed? Well, nobody likes a slow computer. I mean, what if Sonic wants to go look at his emails? Oh, wait. No, he won't, because when he's not playing board games, he's doing absolutely nothing. Guess I'll get a card then. Uh, uh okay. Uh, well, S for speedrun. That's perfect. Oh. Okay, now, as much as I want to steal, uh... A claw reaching for two cards whilst the third falls to its demise. I can't pass up some good old gambling. Let's do the roulette. And now! Whew! Got lucky with that one. Oh, well, if this is anything like Mario Party, the red spaces will make me lose rings. So on to the green space I go. Oh, mini of it! I love mini of it! Son of a bitch! It's Bowser! <laughs> what a dummy! Now I'll just steal one of Sonic's cards and oh come on! Oh! Oh god! What the hell is that thing? Oh well, there's the bashed Amy. Good old Sasquatch. 
Uh-huh, honey, you know that skirt don't go with those shoes. In fact, it don't go with anything. Oh, Thathquatch, you're so thathy. Oh man, here it is, the first mini game. I'm ready to rock. Ow! Uh, Tails always has good cards. Ah! Uh... Ah! Ha! There's no way Sonic can beat my man, the Sasquatch. Alright, time for another mini game. It looks like it's a peer exercise. I wonder who I'll get peered with. I got the dumb one! God damn it! I have zero rings. <gasps> Can it be? Ha <laughs> ha! You fucking drowned, you dumbass piece of shit! I can't get back! Why can't I get back? Get, get up, you lazy ass turtle fuck! Hey, Sonic, get your own cards! Eggs in space! Okay, it's definitely on my side. I can feel it. I mean, it's all a matter of luck, but I have a sneaking suspicion- OH FUCK YOU, TAILS, YOU CHEATING PIECE OF SHIT! Okay, Tails definitely has a good card. He always does. Oh, oh, come on! Ugh, you know what? I really wanted to get to that dolphin space, but I'm over it. I'm done making Sonic Shuffle videos. I'm sorry to all my fans who only watch my Sonic Shuffle videos, but please, go watch my other videos. I put so much more work into them, and they're honestly way better. I came to this decision when I was playing Sonic Shuffle, and I picked a mystery card from Tails' deck, only to see that it was a 1. I was so close to the Dolphin Square, but I just can't handle it anymore. Eh, yeah, whatever, I'll restart and try again. Just restart the timer! Alright, let's go, let's go! There's no time for cutscenes! Uh... I... I was playing... Knuckles? I prefer his new voice actor, to be completely honest. I don't know why they keep calling Sonic Mario. I mean, just before they were calling him by his real name, um, Maurice. Oh wait, no, no, he's Bowser. No wait, Sonic is Sonic. Gee, this is getting all really confusing. I can see why IGN gave this game a 4.7 out of 10. It's just a bit of a humble bumble, isn't it? Oh man, not this one again. Although this time it looks like we're taking turns. Okay, so we can't hit the Eggman symbols, got it. They still haven't hit a single bad card. They were all shuffled. This AI is bullshit. Sega, stop making this garbage. Go back to what you're good at. Bring back Flicky. That game was a classic. You got Flicky, Tiger, Chirp, Iggy, and this ear grating tune. Fun for the whole family. I just can't play any more of this. I feel like I'm getting nowhere. I'm sorry, everyone, but for the first time in Speedrun Honeybun, I'm canceling the video. No! I've landed on the dolphin space, baby! It's time to finish this! Let's go, dolphin! Oh! Oh. Oh no! One day I hope to play Sonic Shuffle on real hardware with actual people, but hey, you know, what can you do? So next up is... At this point in time, I'd been wanting to play Shovel Knight for a long while, because this was a long time after the game had come out, and for some reason I thought to myself, I can't just play a game on my own, that's ridiculous. So I did a video on it, and hey, I enjoyed myself, but it's not like people were here for games like Shovel Knight, so the view count really does kind of show that. Uh, but you know, like, I get it, they're here for Sonic. <laughs> Even though my most viewed videos are Pokemon Sword and Shield and Doki Doki Literature Club. I mean, if you don't count Five Nights at Sonics. <laughs> I, I, enlisted, I enlisted in there for a reason. I still haven't played any of the uh, the Shovel Knight DLC. I want to, uh, especially the, uh, the co-op DLC stuff, but for some reason that only came out on the Wii U. I don't know if it's on the PC version right now, I doubt it, but like, come on man, that's like the main thing I was interested in. One thing I've noticed going back through these videos is that the sketches, they, they go on a little bit too long. Nowadays when I do a sketch, cause hey, I like doing sketches, it's fun. Uh, I try to make them, you know, pretty quick and snappy, but uh, in these ones, it, it, it just keeps kind of dragging on. Like, I keep Bear Grylls around for a reason nowadays, and that's because he's 
he's fun. Uh, but I, I, I can absolutely understand if you took one look at these older videos and like, this guy, he's not for me, I'm, I'm just gonna, this is like 2009 YouTube, I'll, I'll see you later. Ha! What are you doing? Uh, I'm Shovel Knight, duh. Ha! Were you gonna stop anytime soon? Nope. What are you doing? I'm Shield Knight. And I'm Plague Knight! Hey there, thanks for popping in. It's always great to have unexpected visitors. Today we're going to have a look at Shovel Knight, deciding whether or not it deserves to be slaughtered or salvaged. What the fuck are you doing? What? Can you not go 10 seconds without ripping off another YouTuber? Well, I'm just... You cut it out right now, or I'm going to come over there and hit you with this stick. Okay, okay, whoa, man. Jeez. Or I mean, I would if I wasn't you already. So, Shovel Knight. I actually never got around to playing it when it was first released. Left and right, reviewers were praising this game like it was a gift from the holy heavens, commanding us to bathe in the warmth of its glorious retro buttocks. But there was one man, one man who didn't give in to the hype. That was me. Because I didn't have the money. I mean, I still don't have any money, but at least now I have Shovel Knight. I wish I had a physical copy, but I don't. It's Steam. Shovel Knight is a 2D retro-style platformer created by Yacht Club Games. Story-wise, it's fairly straightforward. Shield Knight, Shovel Knight's adventuring partner, has been sealed inside a tower after a recent adventure went wrong. One day, the tower is unsealed from within thanks to the evil Enchantress. Shovel Knight heads towards the tower in the hopes of rescuing Shield Knight, her fate unknown. And then BAM! Right into the first level! Now the first thing to take note of is Shovel Knight's choice of weapon. I bet you can't guess what it is! Shovel Knight can use the shovel to uncover buried treasure and kill enemies. Or he would if I wasn't so shit. First enemy. That's essentially his whole move list, although he can buy upgrades for his shovel and armor later on in the game. Like the charge handle, which allows him to charge up his attack for a high damage slash. The drop spark, which gives him a Master Sword-esque full health projectile. And my favorite upgrade, the gold armor, which does absolutely nothing but lets you do cool flips. Woo! Now I've had this game for a while, and to be honest, I haven't had the patience to get anywhere past Plague Knight's castle. But for the sake of this review, I will try to get as far as I can, but I don't know whether I'll have enough time, so I might not finish the game. 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 Now right away I noticed some similarities to other classic retro games. We've already talked about the Zelda-esque projectile, but there's also the shovel jump, which is sort of similar to the DuckTales jump. Speaking of, is that a cane or a pogo stick? I can never tell. The game also just screams Mega Man to me. I mean, you've got the eight knights, which are the eight robot masters, Proto Man, which is Black Knight, and the Enchantress, who's Dr. Wily. A sexy Dr. Wily, but a Wily nonetheless. Shovel Knight's levels are filled to the brim with secrets and treasure. Occasionally, you'll stumble across a chest where you can buy that level's relic. These can vary from an item which gives you a couple seconds of invincibility, a fireball, a green ball, arcing anchors, or even a big ol' horn, the list just goes on. One thing Shovel Knight does differently to earlier retro platformers is get rid of the live system. No longer will you be seeing this screen. Oh, uh, uh, no, no, not that screen. Instead, when you die, a portion of your money gets thrown out and hovers there, and you've got to get it back without dying or else it's lost forever, Dark Souls style. This is for the best, really, because if I had to restart any of these levels from the beginning, I'd probably still be playing. Once you finish a level, Shovel Knight calls it a day and settles down for the night. Throughout your adventure, you'll find multiple NPCs that'll help you on your way. There's the Gastronomer, who'll upgrade your maximum health, the Magicist, who'll increase your magic meter, the Armorer, oh gee, I wonder what he does, the Shovelsmith, who'll upgrade your shovel, and the Travel King, who'll fill your chalices with a magical eye core. Now here's where things get interesting. When you talk to this giant applefish for the first time, you're forced to watch a small dance number, a cutscene if you will. Now, did you know that you can actually move during this cutscene? Look closely now. Look at me! I'm dancing! You can do this in every dance number! Yes! All two of them! Board? Bam! Not anymore with this new leg bending technology! Now dance again, I command it! Here's the overworld map. It's 
nice, isn't it? Occasionally you'll find these little challenge squares in which you can use a newly acquired relic to traverse through. Hmm, I need the phase logger, huh? Well, I've got it. Time to go get some treasure! I don't see those ones. Now, whilst the game is looking mighty fine right now, there are a couple of things which aren't so great. I used that line last time, didn't I? I gotta get some new material. Gee fucking right you do! <laughs> Firstly, spikes kill you in one hit. It doesn't matter from what angle, you will always die when you hit them. Unless you have the phase locket, of course, in which case you can touch them for about two seconds. It's okay most of the time when they serve as death pits or such, but when they're just peppered on the ceiling in a water level, a place where your jumping strength is already super powerful, you know, because of the water, it gets a little bit annoying, especially if just the tip of your scalp just brushed against them. Another thing is the darkness. This game just loves taking vision away from the player. I'm all for a challenge, but I think making it so I have to guess where I'm jumping is starting to edge away from Donkey Kong Country and more towards Cat Mario. Ghosts in both games? Coincidence? Or maybe something more? And is it just me or does a part of the Explodatorium's theme sound awfully familiar? I don't know, maybe it's just me. Occasionally you'll also run into these wandering travelers. They're never too hard, but you don't want to be out of eye core when you fight them. It's best to finish them off as quickly as possible. Oh. Oh. Oh crap, that was a close one. Oh, uh, um, I'll use, uh, GO BALL! Ah, oh, you stupid thing, I always knew you were useless. Oh, hell, the quadruple hit ball! <laughs> You know, I just noticed that Black Knight loves. Stop that! That Black Knight. He he, he loves like like knuckles and Sonic and, and Sonic Three. Can you not, please? So you've made it to one of the final lit. <clears throat> so you've made it to one of the final levels, and everything is going dandy. But then you encounter it. Doesn't very spooky, is it? But then you encounter it. The dreaded crushing crushes! Oh boy, gee fucking whiz. Put me on a rock and a sand and call me Sally. Why does this level exist? Gee whiz, this level is so bad. Getting hit was one of my top strategies to get past this one part. Getting hit. In a game where you're not supposed to get hit. Careful now. You don't want to mess with an internet classic. You might end up somewhere you don't want to be. Cure. Oh, shut up. I'm sure that everyone agrees that the little can go suck my nuts. Radical Soda, you are hereby charged with defiling fan-favorite game Shovel Knight with your disgusting, tasteless words. How do you plead? Guilty, but it was only- I sentence you to life imprisonment! <laughs> Alright, watch out. There's gonna be some in-game spoilers here, so if you don't want to see them, skip to this time. Woo! Look at that! I can't put an annotation there because YouTube doesn't, like, let you put in cards and also annotations of the same video for some reason, so... You're gonna have to manually find it yourself, I guess, if you accidentally scrub over something and you see by accident. That's your fault, that's on you, that's not on me. <laughs> well, that's on YouTube. Whew, that's on three people. So right before you enter the final level, Black Knight... Stop it! I, I, what? This isn't even the right song! Challenges you one final time, this time powered up by the Enchantress. You beat him and continue on to the final level, which has a really freaky gimmick. Feels like I could fall off any second. And after that, you finally face up to the evil Enchantress, and after a nerve-wracking battle, she finally... turns into Shield Knight? Okay, I'm gonna be honest, I guess this from the moment I started the game, but that doesn't make it any more moving when Shovel Knight swoops in to catch her at last. Oh yeah, there's also a couple of levels where you've got to catch her in the dream sequence or whatever, it makes it seem more tear-jerking, yeah, 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 whatever. With the evil amulet shattered, which is what turns Shield Knight into the Enchantress, the magic within it is released to create one final last boss fight, with Shield Knight by your side. Unfortunately, Shovel Knight is caught off guard after the fight, probably because of the prospect of getting some sweet shield booty, and falls, while Shield Knight fights to hold off. Uh, did they actually give this thing a name? Uh, well it says here it's the Remnant of Fate. Uh, Alright. Shield Knight holds off the Remnant of Fate's attack and tells Black Knight to escape and take Shovel Knight to safety. Her fate is unknown as the castle swallows her and the Remnant of Fate back up again. Black Knight Prop Shovel Knight up on a log and heads off, leading into the credits. I'm not gonna lie, I did tear up a little bit at this point. Hey, but at least we get to see what happens to all the knights. 
that we fought along the way. Geez, you really had the waterworks running. Nope. Just Team Chaotix. Are you guys bloody done? I need to film my own show! Wait, what's your show? Current Quackies. So, wow, we actually did it! We finished the game! Turns out we're not quite done yet, though, as there seems to be a whole other campaign you can play as Plague Knight. Well, I'm gonna have to be honest, I don't have the time for that. I think we got plenty far, though. I mean, we almost got all the relics, and we did finish the game, technically. So... With that all being said, thank you all so much for watching, and if you enjoyed the video... Oh my goodness! Badger Eye. Not everyone needs to complete games, you know. Are you guys fucking finished? Oh! Then I worked on another video, which was also a popular game that I did way too late. Dark Souls was an even further departure from what I regularly play, at least Shovel Knight was a platformer. But Dark Souls was, you know, Dark Souls, so... Uh, I knew I wasn't probably gonna get very far because the game was very long and uh, there would be a lot of footage that I would have to comb through and nowadays... You know, I would probably just play the whole game and then cut it up into the specific segments, but the way I did things back then was that I had... And I still do this, I have to cut out a lot, but every time I think of a joke, even if it's terrible, I write it down. And back then I would... do all the jokes. I wouldn't cut out the ones that I don't think are very good, because back then I'm like, yeah, that's... That's content, right? That's good stuff. That's a great joke, me, but... Uh, you know... <laughs> And if, if the jokes that are in my current videos are considered the good ones, you don't want to know what the bad ones were, but I guess you'll see them in this video, so... Am I too high up now? I restarted the... I had to restart filming because I ran out of space, and... and I, just, <laughs> I could sit down like this, if that makes things easier. I really don't like this video. I was trying to do some weird thing with my voice, like, oh yeah, I'll be like real calm and like, hey guys, welcome to Dark Souls. It's me, Radical Soda. I'm here to play the game and it's gonna be so easy. And then, you know, when the, when the shit hits the fan, as it would, uh, I would be, oh no, help me, I'm screaming, I'm playing Dark Souls. And I just, I don't, I can't, like, I'm, obviously, I wasn't very good at like, reading scripts as if I was... Because this was all scripted. All these Honey Bun videos were scripted. I... I... <laughs> I wasn't good. I wasn't good at reading. I'm still not good at reading them. I'm better. I'm not great at it. But hey, I give it a go. Like, all of this is scripted. I'm sure you can tell. N not this. I'm going on a weird a, 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 a tirade off to the side, but you know what I mean. Welcome to Speedrun Honey Bun, the show where we successfully complete games in record time. You know, you really need to have top-notch gaming skills in order to do this show. <laughs> well, I mean, I'm not that great at video games. Yes, indeed. What did you just say to me, you old hag? Let's see if that's how funny once I've grabbed a hold of your old lady bosoms and whirled you around like a goddamn blender! Welcome to the world's first blind Dark Souls 3 speedrun. Don't look any further into that, just go with it. Now, as usual, I dare say that we'll have no problem with this game, so I thought I'd make it a relaxing experience for everyone and play some smooth jazz to ease the tension and further envelop you in what is known as the soda effect. Now, what I'm doing here is altering my character's appearance. To whom, you ask? <laughs> Why, me, of course. Who else is going to participate other than yours, truly? Ah, uh, yes, just change this up here, a little over here. I think something might have gone wrong in the character creation process. Much to my dismay, even with my phenomenal gaming skills, we are running at what one would call slightly behind schedule. No matter, we will embrace our new comrade with open arms, and maybe a quick stab to the gullet if he continues to stare in that manner. Okay to start game with this character, of course it is! Look at him, he's rearing to go! Tutorials! Ha! <laughs> How trivial! I am adept in the art of Dark Souls 1, there is simply no need to read. Huh? Huh? Whoa, whoa there! Thankfully, I know the secret Grand Dodge technique. Turn back! Pfft. Once again, game. I think I know quite a bit more than you when it comes to what I can and can't do. Ah, I see. 
Now, some of you might call this running away, but I would rather refer to it as a tactical retreat. Ah! <laughs> oh, no, you can't get through the gap, huh? It's just like Dark Souls 1 all over again. If you find a weakness, exploit it. Oh. Oh, oh no. no. Oh, okay, ah! Uh... This would have never happened in Dark Souls 1. Take this, you brute! And this! And this! And you! If you would be so kind to just stand there whilst my stamina replenishes, that would be lovely. Plunging attack? PLUNGING ATTACK! You fool! See how I move in such an erratic fashion? Give up now, before- OW! Now I have a sneaking suspicion that the statue will not stay this way for long. Ah, shit! You may have brawn, but I have the ability to stab you in the crotch, thusly- OW! I have put my tongue! But I have the ability to stab you in the crotch, thusly- Ha! <laughs> this boss is child's play. If the rest of the game is like this, I'll- oh, what the fuck?! Now come here, you great oaf! I have a score to settle with you! How am I doing worse than before?! Now do not distress, I have everything under control. What? I'm coming for you, brother! Bam! See that grand dodge! Um... Hey, bub! No, don't kick it, bonehead! Duh, I might as well just kill myself. What is this?! Ah! How did he learn your moves?! Get him in the ass! In the ass! You are but nary an obstacle on my way to greatness! Yeah! No, I can't die now. I have so many things I still want to do. I want to find a wife. Have kids. Crawled. This is it. Goodbye. But not today, bitch! I'm the master of Dark Souls Street Plunging Attack! No, no, no! Take this, you goat scrotum! Oh shit, oh shit! Round two, baby, fuck! Round three! Take this! Yeah! First try, baby! No, you dumbass! Stop kicking! I can do it! I can, I can do it! I still have enough health! Yeah! The entire world will know of my grandeur, my passion, my greatness. And thus I enter what I shall refer to as the next part of this ungodly world. What horrors will it hold? Am I afraid? <laughs> there is nary a soul who truly frightens one such as myself. I am not one to trifle with such unnecessary emotions. No, don't fucking kick you! Uh, uh, oh, oh man, that's, oh, that's good. I will never doubt you again. The kick strikes again, bitch! Welcome to the bonfire, unkindled one. My name is Bowser. Then touch the darkness within me. Oh, well, if you say so, I, I mean, I'm never back down. Ah, another one roused from the sleep of- Shut up! Where do I go? Produce the coiled sword at the bonfire. Oh, well, why didn't you say so? Oh. I could kill her. I could kill her, guys. But then how would I touch her darkness within? Bazing, bazaar, potato and lamb! I'll see you at the restaurant! I'm getting the salad! This is the right friend scene! I'm getting the salad! Fuck you, boxes! Fuck you, chair! These guys will know salad if I hit them in the face! Oh, no, doggo! No! Ow! Ow! No! What? Stop! Wait, stop! Stop! Everyone, stop! You moron, I bet you ordered the shrimp for- oh! How will Bowser get out of this one? Find out next time on Dragon Ball Z. Fuck! More fire bombs! My black ones aren't even in my menu. Oh. Hey there. I got a hero fast. No, not my black fire bomb! Ah, shit! 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 Ow! 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 Plunging attack! How is he still alive? Oh, that's a big guy. I should probably sneak away. But not before I kill this guy, Banana Slammer! Wait, no, I didn't do it! I didn't, I didn't do it! Stop! Stop! I, I can get you, Salad! Charge attack! Shit! There's never been a better time to extend your fearless to the vast giraffe society, if you know what I'm getting at. I'm fine. I'll go this way! No! Nope. Fuck you, giraffes! You have no salad! That's a human food! Ah! I didn't even do anything this time! I'll get away with my impeccable balance! No! The giraffes! No! No! They too have impeccable balance! I will run with my head! I'll die! No further than a giraffe's! But higher than a waiter who asks if I need my sauce! Of course I need sauce! But first there's a pavlova with my name on it! That name being Bowser! Oh, there's so much salad here! Ah, that was excruciating, wasn't it? That was great! Hmm, anybody who watched through that, I'm so sorry. We have another strange pick here, it's almost like I wanted to do a, a variety show on video games instead of just going between Sonic and Pokemon, but hey, that's on me. I, so I chose to do that eventually and I just kind of boiled it down into those things, so I'm going to try to get back into doing a variety, so... Um, 
hopefully you can look forward to that. Now, I did actually used to play a lot of Final Fantasy XIV. It's probably my most played game of all time. It's not my favorite game of all time, but there's so much to do in it, obviously. It takes a long time to do it. Uh, but back when I made this video, I hadn't played it for as long as I probably should have when I got the footage and wrote the script. Obviously, there was a lot of stuff I didn't know about. There was a lot of information that I just flat out got wrong. To be honest, the reason I slowed down while playing the game is because they just... I, I, I don't really like what they're doing to the game recently. They're, they're adding less and less new stuff, making it take longer between each one. And I get it, like, you know, you want to slow down production to make sure it's quality, but it just kind of feels like what we're getting is the same as before, but now just kind of less. One big issue I had with it was especially during COVID, I get that you don't want your employees to like have to work in the office during COVID so obviously things are going to slow down, things are going to stop and I completely understand that and they're like okay these events aren't really going to happen, we can't really work on making these uh, new things for you guys and we're like yeah that's alright, that's cool and so we don't get the events but the paid shop keeps updating Gotta get those new costumes for more than what a month's worth of a subscription I am, <laughs> I was flabbergasted to that really, like I get it, like there's a paid shop, the developers of 14 don't like it, It's that's been on record, they don't, they don't like that paid shop, but Square Enix is like, we want the money, we want all the money, and you're gonna give it to us. The biggest like middle finger to the people paying for a subscription of 14 at at the time, I think personally for me, was uh, there was this Chocobo carriage mount. And that was, uh, I think it was either leaked beforehand or we knew about it or something. And an event was coming up called the uh, Rising, which is like kind of like an anniversary to when the game came out. And you ride in on a Chocobo carriage at the very start of the game. It's like every, or is that like just Gridanian people? I think Gridanian and, and Uldar, the two, one, two of the three starting towns, you, you started in this Chocobo carriage. So it would be a really neat reward for people who can remember that initial cutscene and be like, yeah, that's really good. No, it was a paid shop item. We got... Uh, in the event that we're paying again what 20 bucks a month for um we got a picture frame which was great and the the the, the chocobo carriage of course was double or triple the amount of a, a month subscription i don't know where they get off anyway world of magic full of strife create me a creature full of life oh look it worked Hey man, have you seen my dragon dildo? <laughs> These have the best stats. I swear. Final Fantasy XIV, A Realm Reborn. Now this is actually Square Enix's second time at trying to create this game. As far as I'm aware, the first one was utterly shit. Now I've tried many MMOs, by that I mean all the free ones. But I can never stick with any for very long. But that all changed when this little game ended my life. Great, let's get started. What? Trick 2 I didn't ask for you. Where's Final Fantasy XIV? Trust me, it's a bad idea. What? Shrek 2, give me Final Fantasy. Whoa, 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 whoa. What? Maybe it doesn't work? Of course it works, Shrek 2. Do I look bloody dumb to you? Well, a cute button nose? What? I, I mean, I think you might need to get your eyes checked, but... Thick, wavy locks? Well, that's more like it. You're getting more on track. But until you tell me where Final Fantasy is, you're going right in the pants. Now one thing I'm always worried about- Hot round buttocks! Now one thing I'm always worried about nowadays when picking up a game is whether it'll hold my interest for longer than a day. I tend to play a game for a while and then it starts to feel like I'm wasting time, you know? I mean I've got 623 hours in Gary's mod, but most of that time was spent making those stupid Sonic videos. In fact, the first time I finished Shovel Knight was because I had to record it for the video. So what makes this game so special? Is it because of the gameplay? The graphics? The hot hot babes? Yes, to all those things. And the gambling. Come on, give me the six! Sony needs a new mount! Mm. Now usually when I do these kinds of videos, I'll finish the game as much as I can in order to get a solid opinion and to get the footage I need. Normally that means recording it from start to finish. Now, I know what you're thinking. How can you possibly record an MMO from start to finish? You piece of shit. I have found a way to record Final Fantasy XIV without spending hours and hours replaying the game. I'm not going to. I mean, I've already played over 200 hours and I haven't even gotten to the DLC yet. Can you imagine me trying to record that much footage? It'd be a nightmare. Nope, for this review, I'll be using my already level 50 character, Sidian Eurydice. Yes, she is a girl. 
If I wanted to watch a man's butt jiggling for hours on end, I'd just slap a camera on my ass and go jogging. Oh yeah, that's the stuff. So just like any MMO, you start off by creating a character. There are a few different races you can choose from, and all of them are pretty cool. Apart from the Lala Fell, they've always kind of creeped me out. From there, you can customize your character, I'll speak a little bit more on that later, choose your class, and depending on what you chose, the game will start you out on a different hometown. Me, I picked Pugilist because I like punching things, so my city was Uldar. Uldar, a city of wealth, hardworking citizens, honest shopkeeps, and dancing cat girls, whoa -hoo -hoo! The city itself is very similar to Rabanasta from Final Fantasy XII. It even has the quicksand, which is a tavern, just like the sand sea. In fact, the whole game feels very Final Fantasy XII-esque. If you've played XII before, you'll definitely notice some similarities in sound effects and art here and there. Speaking of, I can't wait for that remaster. Square, if you could just confirm that it'll be on PC, that'll be great. The gameplay, however, isn't anything like XII. In its place, we have... A generic MMO combat system. Use the same attacks over and over. The fun never stops with the generic MMO combat system. I personally think it's a bit of a shame to see them go down this route. I mean, they could have had a turn-based system, kind of similar to 10 2 I mean, you've got a chocobo partner as a second party member, and the dungeons could be awesome. Each person controlling their own character with their own ATB gosh. I mean, that's just my personal take on it. I'm not the best guy to talk to about this. I mean, I'm not a game designer or anything. Oh, wait. Yes, I am. I mean, a really shitty game developer, but you know. Now, going back to the classes real quick, a cool thing about this game is that you can change them at any time. Need a DPS for a dungeon you're playing with friends? Simply switch to one. Of course, you'll have to spend an ungodly amount of time leveling up the character to whatever level the dungeon needs to be, but after that, hey, go nuts. Of course, you also have the crafting and gathering classes, but who needs them? Me, man! Me, fight monster! Me also knit a hat on the side, but then me kill a giant frog! Arrgh! Speaking of, uh, man, shut up, I needed a reason to go back to character creation. Let's talk about the customization options in the game. Character customization is one of my favorite things in video games, and I was disappointed to see that there really weren't that many options. Hell, Terra has way more options than this game, and it's free! I mean, I get it, you don't want hideous abominations running around, it ruins the immersion. But having every character look the same does essentially the same thing. They do actually give you plenty of hair options though, and you can change it, and any facial decorations you may have, at any time using the crystal bell that you unlock a small ways into the game. I do this really often, and it's really great that it's there, and for free. Can't change your race for free though, that shit costs real money. Why Squeenix doesn't exploit this by creating new races more often is beyond me. I mean for the Heaven's War DLC, we got the all Ra, but that's all it's been so far. Originally, Squeenix was considering putting the Vera, you know, the rabbit people from Final Fantasy XII, in instead, but they changed their mind. If they were to include them in the new DLC, Stormblood, however, well, I'll tell you now, my wallet would have absolutely no problem jumping out of my pocket and into that of Squeenix's. But no, we got... Red Mage! Boy, I, I love mages of red. And don't be one of those people who say, You can't just add an entire new race to the game, Raptor Soda. It doesn't make sense with the lore. I mean, the whole story doesn't make sense if you think about it. You are the chosen one, the hero of light who will fight for Eorzea and end all evil. Wow, awesome. Who are all these guys? Oh, they're all the chosen one too. Now don't get me wrong, it's always cool to see yourself in a fantasy setting saving the world, but it's a little harder to see that character as yourself when they don't even look anything like you. It's like the game hates ugly people. I mean, look at my great honking schnoz. You think you can get a nose this magnificent in the game? Nah. I mean, the character creator does have some excellent settings, like a boob meter for start. Going back to the DLC real quick, I recommend you buy the game and all DLC from the Square Enix website and not Steam. Square Enix likes to have sales every now and again, but Steam doesn't seem to give a shit. Oh, Steam, you sure are terrible at this particular subject. Ah! Also keep in mind that you can't transfer your character between the Steam and Squeenix version of the game. Game. Now heading on to graphics, I must say that the game looks really nice, especially in the maximum settings. You might sometimes get into a situation where there are so many effects going on you have no idea what's going on, but most of the time, it's fine. My laptop can even run this game pretty well, although never over 30 FPS, but if you're worried that yours might not be able to handle it, you can always try the free demo on Steam. But then eradicate it from your hard drive and purchase it from Squeenix, trust me! The world of Eorzea, I'm, I'm hoping I'm saying that right, looks very pretty, and sometimes I like to just jog places I need to go, just so I can see more of the world in detail. And you'll be seeing a lot of this world as you travel from quest marker to quest marker over and over again. 
If you're like me, you'll spend the first hour or so reading every line of dialogue from every NPC to gather all the story together until you just get bored and then you just skip everything, including the main storyline. I mean, right now I'm supposed to be confronting Ramu at the striking tree and I have no idea why. But let's be honest, the real reason we play this game isn't for the story, it's to gain levels so we can get better and better gear for our characters. And boy howdy, is there a lot of gear. Most gear you receive throughout the story is tailored to help give you better stats and so on. But some articles of clothing, however, have no beneficial value whatsoever other than looking cool. And what do we do with these? We glamour, of course! Through the art of the pyramid thingies, you can make any article of clothing look like anything else! Want to stroll around in a bikini? Now you can, you pervert! Anything is possible with glamours! Who wants to look like a homeless under level 50 noob when you can just wear, uh, how about a Santa hat? And nothing else. Wait a minute, that means I don't have to walk around in this tasteless clothing anymore, I can waltz around in style! <laughs> You still think this was a good idea? Shut up, Shrek 2, I look fabulous. Now with any MMO comes dungeons. There are plenty of them in this game and more and more being added all the time, I'm assuming. And for the most part, they're great. I've only ever had one person in my party who didn't know how to let the tanks take the aggro and I just have to stop and heal them as their health plummeted again and again and again. But most people are good at the game and nice as well. I remember a time when my friend's laptop overheated and he had to restart it and my party waited patiently for him. In fact, I think we danced. I mean, it's not that we could have really gone anywhere without him, he was a tank, but, mm, you know. Of course, I play in one of the Japanese servers, so that might be why everyone's so nice. I hear terrible things about World of Warcraft. Oh my god, Radical Soda plays on the Japanese server? What a weeb! What an otaku! What a hentai! Now, I do live in New Zealand, but there is a very good reason why I don't play on the Oceanic servers. Because there aren't any. Everyone from New Zealand and Australia has to choose whether to play on the Japanese or American servers. I heard good things about Tonberry, so that's where me and my friend went. Unfortunately, because of the time difference, this sometimes leads to horrendous queue times in some dungeons. Occasionally you might get lucky and get one within 10 minutes, but most of the time you're stuck waiting around for a good hour or so. Forget about me! Go! Absolutely! Just let me wait for a full party and then we're ready to go. Thankfully, of course, you can do things while waiting, but if you really just want to progress in the story or get the materials you need for one of the relic weapons, you're stuck, my friend. Thankfully, I've got other shit to do. So while I'm waiting, I usually work on a video, I animate, or I just work on illustrations. You can see them on my Twitter, by the way, just follow Air Travel Mob. After a couple nights of queuing, not just queuing, I mean, I did get to do the dungeons, I was just doing multiple ones, I found the perfect time to queue up. One in the morning. Not exactly the best time, I know, especially if your work starts early, or starts at all, really. But Square Enix, if you're watching this by some random chance, then there's something I need to ask of you. Something the whole of New Zealand needs to ask of you. Please, so many people could use it. We need it so badly. Please, I beg of you, give us rabbit people. Come on, everybody, Viera Town, coming soon to the DLC. See you later, bye bye. Funny how we actually got the Viera as a race later on down the line. I got exactly what I asked for, except, well, for one, they were half finished. They couldn't wear hats, there was only female in the race, and uh, they had like half the hairstyles of all the other races, including ones you could like purchase in-game with in-game money, obviously, and things you could unlock. They couldn't even wear those. Only nowadays, I think, they're starting to finally add in those hairstyles uh, and some hats, I think. I, uh, I'm not 100% sure. But what was even a bigger problem to me at the time was that they just didn't look like Vieira. They looked like Barbie dolls with rabbit ears. And that, <laughs> there's a really good video showing, uh, exactly what, what I thought at the time, uh, uh, about this race. And this, this makes it sound like I'm, I'm, I'm a bloody racist. I'm talking about a Final Fantasy rabbit person race, by the way. <laughs> Nobody takes that out of context. Viera have very distinct features, is what I'm trying to say, and, like, almost none of those were taken into account for the uh, 14 version, which, you know, I get, you know, you gotta make clothing and stuff, but even then the faces and things, and like, I, I, I'll link to the video, it'll be down in the description. I, it got a lot of hate. I don't think that's warranted to be honest like 14 fans will just shovel in whatever the company gives them because they're like oh yeah no don't you see the paid shop that means more content for us even though it's been proven that square enix uses 14 as like money bags for other projects like their great nft games or their or, the, or that other game that yeah there's a, there's a dog barking, I don't know if you can hear it. Like, whatever, you're allowed to like this race, that's fine, and again, that sounds 
really bad out of context, but, um, you know, it's just not a Vieira to me, so I, I, I'm just going to leave it at that, and we'll move on to the next video. Thanks, thanks, dog. So I did a video on Kingdom Hearts 1 because I wanted to do a video on Kingdom Hearts 2. <laughs> You know, can't do a, you know, can't can't do a video on King of Hearts 2 without doing one on one first. You you gotta do them in order, which is something I'm still kind of stuck at with Final Fantasy X2, which is my favorite, uh, one of my favorite games of all time. But uh, I think, well, people aren't gonna understand X2 if they if if I haven't played X. But I should just play it. In, I should just do a video on it anyway. Who cares? Everybody knows Final Fantasy X. Can you shut up? Halfway through the game, I realized that I kind of didn't like Kingdom Hearts One. It, not for any good reasons, rather I just preferred Kingdom Hearts 2. I love the, the gameplay Kingdom Hearts 2, it's very fun, I like doing the randomizers and stuff. But Kingdom Hearts 1 is very slow paced, it's very, uh, uh, it's very different. And that kind of, because uh, I'd only played Kingdom Hearts 1 from when I was a, a young child, so I didn't really remember it all that well, but it just wasn't for me. And that really does show in the video, because I do kind of skim through it. I really hate, you know, I still hate, I still hate the Alice in Wonderland level. What the hell is going on with those box sky boxes? I, I don't know what to call them. Like the the land is made of just walls, and it's so claustrophobic, and I despise it. I might go back to it one day. I might give it another go. But uh, uh, with all these other games out there in the world, I doubt that I'll bother. But hey, if you like it, that's great. Nothing against you. I don't care. I know it's still a decent game. I just don't really like playing it. And that's fine, that's just me. Anyway, enjoy the video. Holy herpes, it's Kingdom Hearts! My disc is also scratched to shit, so I'm gonna be using an emulator. Also, I still don't have a fucking console recorder! Look at this title screen, beautiful. The first thing lots of kids saw when playing this game for the first time. I'm sure that it brings back lots of memories that- Is that a fish carcass in your mouth, Sora? Sora, spit that out before you get scumbroid! I've been having these weird thoughts lately. Whoa, Sora, I don't need to hear about that! I don't want to get this video flagged, alright? So I guess we have uh, Titus from Final Fantasy X, Waka from Final Fantasy X, and uh... Okay, I'm guessing she's from a Final Fantasy game too, but I've got no goddamn idea which one. Get off my back! Ah, of course, how could I forget about Kyrie and Riku? Holy shit, that is one muscly kid. All right, gotta find this stuff for the raft. We're building a raft, by the way. All I need is some rope, some... Oh, here's the log I was looking for. Riku, you lazy ass! We're getting stuff for the raft and you've just been sitting on your... Lazy ass! Well, I mean, Kyrie's not doing much either, but I've got beef with you! Or maybe you have the beef. How often do you work out? Alright, maybe this will get you in the mood to help. Uh, yeah. I sure showed you! Round two, baby! There's no way I can lose this time I've worked out your movement patterns. I just- Stop springing up this- That's cheating! No, I can't do- Stop it! I can't- ah, You'll never get me up this tree. What are you afraid of? Not you! You glorious- Muscly bastard. Stop it! Stop! 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 No! He's cheating! I know it! I know it! He's cheating! I'll just have to take out my frustration on this guy! Ow! Hey, what's happening, man? Wow, that is the worst Waka impression I've ever heard. Here, let me show you how it's done. <clears throat> Get back here, you pussy! So, Kyrie's home is out there somewhere, right? Could be. We'll never know by staying here. Then how about you help with the raft, you fucking degenerate? You wanted one, didn't you? A palpu fruit? If two people share one, their destinies become intertwined. They'll remain a part of each other's lives, no matter what. Wow, they sound awfully powerful and rare for something growing right over there, huh? Right over there, Riku! Maybe you should check your surroundings before spouting your goddamn filthy lies! Oh, yep, here's Donald, because we can't go 30 minutes without including Disney characters. Let's end the contract! A name for a raft? Is, is that even a question? The answer should be obvious. Bowser butt! Oh, oh, that's a chest! I saw that! I saw that! Wow, he's really rearing to go. Haha, <laughs> a 
Riku, you can't beat me. I was top math lead at school. What? I've been sabotaged, Mum! Riku's cheating again! Climb the ladder! Fuck it. Look at this calm ass. The cheeky bastard is walking. Get up the goddamn ledge! I demand a rematch! I'm ready for it now. Uh, oh, oh, okay. Uh, uh, go! Uh, what the fuck? How'd you get up here so fast? We're neck and neck now. It's all a matter of skill from here on out. This fucking ledge, I swear to God! He's walking again! Third time's the charm. Ah, I did it! I beat Riku! I got a pretty stone! Oh yeah, baby! A beautiful stone that glimmers in the sun. It has little value. Little value?! How dare you! Well, I should go check on Kairi. What? What? I can climb the ladder? And it's a shortcut! What the fuck? Was that any mushrooms? Oh, all right. Oh, here's one. Kairi, I don't think these mushrooms are such a good idea. I've been scouring the island for the last goddamn mushroom for the longest time. The, the, the secret place, huh? Wait, you wanted me to find a mushroom in a location called the secret place? You know the place kept secret! I've come to see the door to this world. Stranger danger! Stranger danger! One who knows nothing can understand nothing. And I guess the musical just come back on like, what pedophile? You know, Riku has changed. Here I thought I was the only one growing here in strange places. Oh god, no, I forgot about the gummy ship! How do I do this?! Sora... Look, I told you all you were gonna get scombroid and you didn't listen! Signs include dizziness, nausea, headache. If that's not scombroid, I'm a palooka. Damn it. I would like to buy items, please. I seem to have misplaced my cash. Will giant keys be a sufficient payment? Hmm, then how about we give that big fucking key a whirl, huh? What do I do? Where, where do I go? This game has no goddamn direction. What? what? I went in there ages ago! How was I supposed to know which door to go back into? I have literally no idea what I'm meant to be doing. I mean, I know I'm meant to go to specific places to trigger a cutscene with Donald and Goofy, but fucking where? Tell me, game, there's no direction! You got any advice, Sid? Take a look around town! You mean the thing I've been trying to do for the past hour and a half?! What?! We're, we're progressing now! Let me get- let me get this straight. I had to enter the shop in the first district, go to the second district, enter the hotel, then enter the Dalmatian's house from this specific entrance, not the other one, enter the alleyway, go back into the second district, go back into the alleyway, post a letter to my grandma, and then somehow know to go back to said shop?! This guy fucking sucks! Alright. Then have it your way. Oh yeah, Leon! I'm sure my big fucking key will beat your sword with a gun attached to it, that's fair! No way. I can lose. Wait, so I can beat a man with a sword but not a kid with a stick? What's going on here? Oh, you're slipping, Leon. <laughs> I went easy on him. Oh come on, man, now you just making me feel bad. You okay? What the heck? Well, I guess we found Kyrie. Oh. I'm the great ninja Yuffie. Hmm? Ah! Stop doing that! What happened to my home? My island? Riku! Kyrie! You know what? I really don't know. You know, judging by the music, I'm guessing that this game doesn't know how to hold a serious moment. Shit, sorry, not you two! Wonderland? Well, like, wonder why anyone plays this shit. How do I feel like I'm a giant and also tiny at the same time? This is messing with my head, man. What the hell is with these box rooms? Did Alice in Wonderland actually have these, or is it just really lazy environment design? What the hell is with this game, man? Alright, well, looks like I gotta light the lamps. Yes, I know to light the fucking lamps, I'm not an idiot. You're seriously gonna tell me what to do when it's so clearly laid out in front of me, but you won't tell me where the fuck to go when fucking Travis Town and fucking hate this game! Oh my god, it's Lanky Frank! Give a round of applause for Lanky Frank, everyone! Give a round of applause! Great, I love the gummy ship segments. In fact, I personally think that they're the best parts of the game. Oh no, we made it to our destination. No more gummy ship. Oh wait, because you can't travel directly to other worlds, and therefore have to individually go to each world in the way of the one you're heading to, I get to do another gummy ship segment! 
Yay! Fucking yay! This game is a masterpiece, is it? With its box rooms, its shitty directions, a camera which is way too zoomed in, mostly children, it's a masterpiece, is it? Fuck you! This game is ass! <laughs> Boy, howdy, I sure did get a little angry there. But here we are in Hercules Land. I gotta spruce this place up for the game! For the games! Here we are, ready to train! Ah, oh, yes, hitboxes! Boy, this sure is fun! <laughs> Yes, this is indeed a... A lot of... fun. I am enjoying myself. Oh boy, I sure do love how Sora misses half the time because the enemy moves three inches to the left. And also how he's got the range of swinging an actual key. Oh shit, we've Edgy McEdgelord, Edgy the Hedgy, and now... I'm gonna call you, uh... Bandage. Get it? Because he's bandaged his sword! Ah, dog! I did it! Me! You know, I'm starting to get a good feeling. I think I'm starting to like this game. I still can't believe that Squirt actually beat Cerberus. Just between us, I'd already worn Cerberus down by the time the little guy jumped in. And the feeling's gone. You can't just let me have it, can you? It's always gotta be me fucking weak. I'm always fucking weak. I'm just not, I'm not strong, not the chosen one. Oh man, I just, I guess I suck at everything. Wee! Hey, at least we get to slide. Ow! Man, I love this movie. This is the one where the guy can't climb up ledges when he swims. Oh wait, no, that's this game. These monkeys are too fucking fast. Sora, can you stop spinning around for every attack? Okay, wow, this boss is actually quite fun. In fact, every boss has been fun so far. I mean, apart from Lanky Frank, all I was doing was repeatedly jumping on a table, and Cerberus, where I was doing more dodge rolling than if I was playing Dark Souls. But, but hey, these other two bosses, quite fun. You know, that was my fault. I'm going to give it another chance. And I can't skip cutscenes. Well, I don't want to watch this again! I know Tarzan! Hee hee hoo ha! Oh look, here's Riku! Oh yeah, Riku! She sure looks trusting! How about you put down the fucking weights and pick up a book, get up, fuck! Now we're fighting pots! This makes sense! God damn it, can I jump on your neck flaps or not? I hate this fucking game! I'm done fucking the neck flaps for the final boss! Fine! Oh shit, I should probably start the timer. Yeah, so as you can probably tell, I was getting a little frustrated by the end of that video. Um, <laughs> uh, that wasn't even where I actually uh, stopped filming. I didn't stop there. I kept going for a while after that, but then I got stuck in the in the giant cat's head, uh, in, in, in the Tomb of the Ancients or whatever the hell they call it, and I gave up. I just, I was like, nah, you know what? I'm not having fun, and if I'm not having fun, why am I doing this job? I, <laughs> you know? <laughs> so after that horrific experience that I gave myself, and again, I know I'm in the minority on that one. I know a lot of people really like Kingdom Hearts 1. That's fine. I wanted to play something a little more relaxing, something just, just fun, just for me. I know it's weird. I know it's a weird one. But uh, this was actually the video where I found my uh, intro theme, which I haven't used in a while because I haven't really felt like it. I don't think many people use intro themes anymore. And to be honest, I don't think my videos need intros because uh, it just I made an intro because everybody else had an intro and that's the way YouTube was. I guess I figured, uh, you know, Radical City had Radical in the name. It wasn't how it happens in the video. You'll see I'm like, oh man, this next theme must be so good because it has Radical in it. That's going to be my theme. And then I'm like, oh my God, it's it sounds like this. But no, in, in reality, I kind of thought it would be a, a neat idea to have that song for a wee while, because I knew I, I, I heard the remix of it in Sonic Gems Collection, or maybe Mega Collection? I think it was Gems Collection. Of course, I also could have picked uh, Radical Highway, but that one's... I don't know if that would really suit my intro, to be honest. As some of you might know, I've got a bit of a weird taste in Sonic games. If you've stuck around for long enough, you might know that I don't particularly enjoy the Sonic Adventure series. I actually like Shadow the Hedgehog. Sonic Heroes is my favorite Sonic game, and Sonic 2... Let's just say that Sonic is better with Knuckles included alongside. So when it comes to smaller Sonic spin-off games, there's no possible way to determine whether I like it just based on reviews or other people's opinions. Not this game, though. I'm the master of Sonic R. This disc boasts a collection of some of Sonic's most loved classics, like Sonic CD, uh, Sonic the Fighters, and, uh, uh, oh, oh, six Game Gear titles. Huh. 
Well, I see the collection, but where are the gems? <laughs> Oh boy, and there's hundreds of collectibles to discover along the way. Mother of Sonic Mega Collection Plus had Blue Sphere, Sonic 3, Knuckles, Knuckles to Sonic 2, Rystar, Comic Zone, The Ooze, and Mother of All Creation Flicky to unlock. I can't wait to see what hidden classics this collection has to offer. You unlock two games. And they're both Vector Man. Whoa, what? Japan got four extra games? Where's my Bonanza Bros? There are actually some pretty fun games on this thing, but we're not here to talk about those today. We're here to talk about Sonic R. Uh, did you know that this was Sonic's first 3D adventure? Yeah! If you don't count the special stages from the Saturn version of Sonic 3D Blast and also the hub world from Sonic Jam. But other than that, like, this is... this is it, man. Right here. It's probably getting real blurry as it comes up close. I hate this sticker. I can't get the sticker off. It's really annoying. Now, originally this was going to be a double video. It's going to be Sonic the Fighters as well on it. But for the sake of being able to expel as much Sonic information as I can in one video, just going to keep it at the one. Because I know a lot about Sonic. Like, I can speak for hours and hours about anything in the Sonic universe. Like, you'll get your one-hour video on rings. Trust me. Not today, but you'll get it. So let's get started, shall we? Sega! Ah, oh, damn it, that always scared the crap out of me. If you wait long enough on the screen, you get a small demo reel of all the games included in the collection. A really compressed, low-quality video, but hey, I'll take what I can get. This is Sonic Gems Collection, everybody. There's no room for complaining. Let's get moving! This is the main menu, I guess. Uh, all this extra stuff is for another day, so until then, let's just head on to Sonic R. So the controls pop up when you select the game. Don't forget that it is imperative that you save the game by selecting load save data in the game options menu! I hope you like that transition effect, because it's the only one. Whoa, that's one hell of an opening. We've got Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Eggman, oh. Wait, this isn't even the whole song, it's just the chorus looped over and over. And let's not forget about the big R you can move around because this game needs you to know that it's 3D. Right from the get go. Sonic's watching you. So right off the bat, we have four whole options. Grand Prix, Time Attack, Multiplayer, that is assuming you somehow convince someone to play this with you, and the options, which has us the SAVE FEATURE, DON'T FORGET OUR PERIOD OF IT IS THE SAVE! Now I did 100% this game as a kid, but to be honest I don't have the best memory of it, but I'm sure it won't be too hard to do again. There's actually a nice number of characters to play as here, unlocked from the start we have Sonic, Tails, Knuckles, Amy, in a car, and I'm assuming that's Eggman hiding behind that big ol' X. Eggman, forget it, you're no treasure. Not yet, anyway. Let's go with our boy, the one, the only, Knuckles! Huh. I remember there being more levels. Ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Go. I wasn't ready. Yeah, if you couldn't tell from the looping supersonic racing, this game had what one might call a slightly different approach to when it came to music. Sonic Unleashed? Orchestral Grandness. Sonic Adventure? Crush 40 Butt Rock. Sonic R? You're the one that makes me feel so high Just like a diamond in the sky So going back to characters real quick In each of the levels there are five Sonic tokens you can collect to get a shot at unlocking another racer As long as you come in first, second or third So let's just go collect those real quick Uh, yep, I'll, I'll just... Uh... What is this?! Tank controls in a Sonic game It wouldn't be so bad if they moved a little faster But look at this! It would help if you moved your legs, Knuckles! It's like turning is an alien idea in this game. Ugh, thanks a lot, wall! Jumping feels way too momentum-based. Just stop by pressing a button instead of holding back, which will put you in a roll, by the way, and good fucking luck controlling that. You bounce off walls like they're made of rubber, except when they're not. And Knuckles drops like a goddamn rock when gliding. Sonic R was originally made for the Sega Saturn, and compared to other Sonic games we've seen on it, it does a nice job with its visuals. The characters look nice, I especially like how Sonic and Tails look, and the courses even have different weather versions, which can even change how the race is played, like when it's so cold the water freezes. Anyway, if we want to see another character, we've got to get those tokens. So, at this point I thought I'd gotten all of them, but I'd missed out on one, so you can imagine how confused I was when a rival race didn't pop up. Hey, look at those lap times though, what an improvement! Well, at least we can watch the replay. I can't shake the feeling like the game wants me to do something. Also, holy shit, this is some stunning cinematography. Because I knew from experience that this level's unlockable character was Metal Sonic, and because I thought I'd collected all of the tokens, I switched to Sonic to see if collecting them with him would work. Let's get those tokens! Oh, uh, 
Oh, uh, please stop rolling. Uh, please. God damn it with the slow turning. Oh, God. oh, I'll get it next time. Oh, I'll get it next time. Uh, oh, uh, damn it. Oh, I'll get that one next time too. Sonic has his own abilities too, of course. He can double jump, and I'm assuming he's the fastest. Not 100% on that, but I think we can all just assume at this point, you know, fastest thing alive and all that. Oh, and I almost forgot about the Chaos Emeralds. There are seven to collect, with each course housing two, apart from the first one, which only has one. Usually they're hidden behind a gate which you need to deposit a certain amount of rings to enter, but occasionally you might get lucky and dumb old knuckles will open it for you. You gotta come in first to keep them though, so the easiest way to get them is to ignore the tokens and just focus on the emeralds. Of course, I'm not that smart, so I went for everything once. Oh god, oh god, where's the last token? Where's the last token? Oh, 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 there it is! Oh god, I gotta! I just gotta come in first! Oh no, Tails, no! No, oh thanks, Eggman! Whoa! The rival races aren't too bad. If you've made it this far, you've got enough skill to beat them. On to the next race! This time we'll be using Tails for the same reason I stated before, I. <gasps> Radical City? This. This is my city! It's calling to me, I can feel it on my feet! Whatever song this course has, I'm gonna make it mine! Get ready for my new channel theme! Oh no! Living in the city! You know what, not bad! Now, whilst I may have forgotten about the music, my special shortcuts remain fresh in my memory. Let's go, Tails. I am the master. I am the man. Uh, will you, can you just say... Oh, Tails has the ability to roll and obviously fly. It helps more in specific levels, this not being one of them. But the worst one is not helping you stop and turn, though. Throughout the courses, you can run through an emblem to receive a random power-up. These include rings, power sneakers, a bubble shield, which allows you to walk on water, and the lightning shield, which draws in nearby rings. The only problem with this is that the rings aren't as fast as you, so you have to either stop and let them catch up, and even then, it's like they're attached to you by rubber bands, or simply just keep running with a cloud of golden hoops bearing down on you like a serial killer on a slasher movie. Ha <laughs> ha! Sonic, you will never beat me! I'm the master of Sonic R! By the way, I'm sure you've noticed it already, but when you play as Tails, prepare to hear this. For the whole goddamn race. I should also probably mention the speedy rainbow things placed near the end of the lap. They'll take all of your rings in order to speed you through a small section of the track, but it maxes out at a certain point, so unless you're on your third lap, just ignore these. And here we have the rival race! Oh, 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 oh. And I win! Again, pretty easy, as long as you got an animal on the controls. Oh, he's dead. He just straight up died over there. Next up is Regal Ruin with our boy Knuckles. You see, with Knuckles, you can just glide to get to the shortcuts. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can get through here, game. Uh, Alright, I guess not. I'm gonna be honest, I spent the most time on this track, mainly because of the alternate paths. It took me a long time to figure out. I... God damn it, pillars! Okay, so we didn't do so well there, and I missed one of the tokens anyway, but where the hell could it be? I'm pretty sure I searched everywhere, but what? Sonic, you're going the wrong way. <gasps> Sonic, you cheeky sneaky! Sonic the cheeky sneaky, coming soon. Yeah, gee, thanks, game. A bubble shield when there's no water. Thanks a bunch. You know what's better than a bubble shield? Two bubble shields. Again, thanks, Sonic R. Does the R stand for retarded? I think the main problem with this level is the speed up located right in the middle of the path. I kept hitting it without a second thought and then not being able to open the doors for the Chaos Emeralds. And I tried going around them, trust me. Okay, after four races, finally we get to the rival race. Also, Knuckles' shoes have white instead of yellow. When did this happen? I started off the race by running for the first token before realizing I'm an idiot. Now all we need is the remaining Chaos Emerald. I guess we can use this opportunity to show off one of the other characters. Metal Sonic here can't double jump, but I think his natural jump is just a little higher than usual. It's kind of hard to tell. He also screams praise Jesus with every jump and can float on water for a little bit. He slows down significantly when doing so, so I don't recommend it. Not that you're watching this video for a guide, unless you are, in which case, welcome to Radical Soda Sonic R Tips and Tricks Episode 1. Tip 1. Collect rings for the emerald before wasting them on a speed up so you can feel like a fucking idiot. Tip 2. Go forward to win! Now because I failed to get in the Chaos Emerald with Metal Sonic, I guess we can also try out the Tails doll. He doesn't jump, rather you just hold down the jump button and he'll just start floating, bobbing up and down. He can float over water just fine though, and he doesn't have that stupid propeller noise the whole time. Okay, so we failed with the Tails doll too, I guess it's time for the Eggbot to win. Weirdly enough, he can't actually fly or jump, rather in its place is a missile like Eggman's. He can also float on water for a short period of time like Metal Sonic. Hey, hey, hold on a sec. How's he doing that? Okay, when I go around the door, that's classified as cheating, but he can just go off and do that shit? That's fucking bullshit. What the hell, man? Medical Soda, Sonic Art Tips and Tricks, Episode 2. The Egg Robo doesn't jump, so don't try to go across any water. Th that's it. Weirdly enough, though, he has the fastest acceleration and the tightest turning. So that's something. 
And we failed again! Can I just win one? Okay, so the last animals are in Reactive Factory, and the only character we haven't tried is Amy, so let's go. Oh. Wow. Radical Soda Sonic R Tips and Tricks, Episode 3! Don't pick Amy, she fucking sucks! This level is the most annoyances when it comes to collecting emeralds and tokens. For both emeralds, you gotta wait until they fall. Also, Amy can't reverse! And almost all of the tokens are in places which will make you struggle with the controls just to turn around again. Look at me! Look how far behind I am! Radical Soda Sonic R Tips and Tricks, Episode 4! Open the emerald doors, but keep running and collect them on the next lap! Wow, that one was an actual tip. Also, for some reason, I find the music in this level to really suit. I have no idea why, maybe it's just overexposure to it or something. Radical Soda Sonic R Tips and Tricks, Episode 5! Don't let this game into your head! I'm serious! Please don't let it in! It'll take over your mind and ruin your life! I just want to see my family! Yeah, please help me! This concludes Radical Soda Sonic R Tips and Tricks, Season 1. For this level, I actually found that the Egg Robo was the best choice because of his great turning. Also, this marks the first appearance of Metal Knuckles. And the last! Because fuck Knuckles, am I right? So we finally have all the emeralds. This means we've unlocked the final level, Radiant Emerald. Hey, hold on here. Whoa! All the levels begin with R! This, this must be because... because... And maybe just a coincidence, but, but hey, it's interesting, I suppose. And now we can play as the mighty Super Sonic! See that Sonic Adventure? Even this game lets you play as Super Sonic when you want! This level doesn't have any tokens, emeralds, or even any water or obstacles. In fact, it's pretty lazy all in all. But it's not really ever a challenge, even though Metal Sonic nearly kicked my ass. It's more of a victory race where you can just listen to the music and revel in your achievement. And that's it! Sonic R has been 100% completed! I mean, if you want, you can come back for balloon races and a game of tag, but in all seriousness, they can go suck my big radical testicles instead. Let's just watch the credits and listen to that insanely good song. You know, it's weird. Sonic R isn't a good game. In fact, a lot of people agree it's pretty bad. But there's just something about it. Like, not to bash on the Sonic Adventure series anymore, but comparatively, this game was a lot more fun to complete, for me at least. I don't know whether it was because it had a short completion time, or it was because of the bright and colourful level themes, or the music that just doesn't really suit, but it's still pretty good. It, you know, as I said before, there's just something about it. Will I be going back to it anytime soon? Hell no. But if you are curious, I do recommend you pick up a copy of Sonic Gems Collection. Going for pretty cheap. You get these classic games on here. Tales Adventure, uh, Victor Man, Sonic CD. I'll get around to those. But uh, yeah, I do. I actually recommend Sonic Mega Collection before you go for this one. But uh, yeah, if you're curious, why not? Next time we'll be looking at another Sonic game. Yes, that's right. Two Sonic games in a row. No speedrun honey bun in between this time. Still kind of figuring out what I want to do with that one. But if you want to vote for a certain Sonic game uh, out of a specific small section, the poll will be on my Twitter. Uh, this isn't a ploy to get you to follow me on Twitter, I swear, but it'll be there. And if you don't vote, who knows what might be here next time. It might be Sonic Labyrinth. Nobody wants that. Or do you? You sick son of a bitch. Anyway, that was cool. Uh, next up is... We didn't really know how good we had it, did we? Now, this video was my first time creating a, a somewhat longer uh, video on a game, and that's weird because it was a two-hour Sonic game. Uh, this was also the video where I first introduced a reoccurring character, which quickly became a, uh, a viewer favorite, I think. I don't know. Let me know if you like that character that I'm talking about. You already know which character. I don't know why I'm uh, pretending it's some sort of big mystery. I think I get a little too excited about the final boss in this one. It really is just the, like an auto runner quick step bullshit. I think the music is really what had me uh, so hyped up near the end there. Because in reality, Sonic Colors is not very mechanically intense and not really all that special, all things considered. I think I was also a little worried about, you know, offending people, like, oh, how dare you d d d d d d remark on my favorite game, Sonic Colors, and it's brilliance, and it's it got Sonic back to its good old d d running and jumping, and... Yeah, no, I don't really like it all that much. I like the music. I like the I like the themes of the levels, I just don't really like the, the level design, and the, and the story is kind of crap. Anyway, enjoy. All right, I wrote notes. The paper. Oh. Jesus. 
Hands. Door. Hallway. Entrance. Door. Good. Great. Awesome. Outstanding. Amazing. Living in the city. It's like a roller coaster. Now, originally in that intro, I ran to the kitchen and set about the door, and then you'd hear, Knife! Suicide! And I thought maybe <laughs> it might not be the best idea for this video. <laughs> anyway, Sword of Colors, brilliant game. More is it? We'll find out soon. Uh, I actually got the DS version first, uh, simply because I didn't have a Wii at the time. I was really upset that I couldn't play the, you know, full version, but you know, it was better than nothing, I guess. And I'll get around to it one of these days, but until then, uh, let's have a look at the back of the box as we've been doing this past couple of videos. So let's have a look here. I'll actually try to get it in focus, unlike last time. Explore hidden paths. Adrenaline pumping super speed. Oh, that sounds fun. Use alien color powers to perform new moves and play with a friend. But again, nobody wants to do so, so don't get your hopes up. Now, whilst I do own the game and a Wii, I will have to go over this every time. I still do not have a console recorder. I just don't have the money for it. What do you expect? I had to buy a PC so I can edit videos and, and, and make animations. But uh, that means again, this time we'll be diving into the world of emulation. Once again, and I'm not condoning emulation in any way. Uh, in fact, if there's one series of games you shouldn't be pirating, it's Sega's. Go buy your Sonic games like a decent human being, thank you very much. Uh, Nintendo, on the other hand, well, let's just say I won't be buying no Switch. But, you know who I've never had a problem with? That's right, Sega! So, that's hints. Why Sonic game? Yeah. I was ecstatic for this game. If it wasn't from the bright and colorful opening, hopping with energy complete with an amazing song I couldn't get enough of, it was the gameplay trailers, promising a fast, flowing style of gameplay, switching between 3D and 2D. And as I said before, I was gutted that I couldn't play it. I mean, I'd already missed out on the definitive edition of Sonic Unleashed and I still haven't played it, but now I was missing out on another brand new Sonic Adventure. No, 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 not that way. It, it wasn't... It, it's Sonic Colors. It's Sonic Colors. Thankfully, that all changed, all because of a small something in high school. In the first two years of high school, I did pretty well. I got first in class in science in the first year and was promised a Wii if I'd do it again the next year. Not a PS3 or Xbox 360 because you sit down for those consoles and there's no possible way you can be an active playing a Wii, right? Right, Mum? Oh, Mother, how wrong you were. Apart from Sonic and Mario at the London Olympic Games, but that shit was overpriced. Jesus Christ, get out of here. And that seemed doable. I never saw myself as a super smart kid, and I wasn't, trust me. But those science tests were easy, multiple choice and all. The only problem being is that a new girl transferred to our school. A really smart girl. I'm not gonna give you a name or anything, because who knows what sort of creeps are watching. But I will say that she even had King in her name. So let's just say I was a little bit intimidated. Okay, who was I kidding? I was shitting myself because I might not get to play a fucking Sonic game. God, I was a pathetic mess. Anyway, final results rolled around at the end of the year, and I had not studied for this test at all. I have no idea why. I was so nervous about not getting a Wii, and yet I didn't put any effort into increasing my chances. I don't know, maybe I just gave up or something. Anyway, the results were in, and I got first all right. First tied. This close, this freaking close. Jesus, I was an incredibly lucky kid. Uh, sorry for going on about that, but Maybe one day we'll come back to another Radical Soda High School Story Adventure. Again with the adventures. <laughs> Radical Soda High School Story Adventure 2! Battle! <laughs> so the game starts up with that amazing opening we've talked about. I have to say, the animation in this is really, really good. You can see the wobble, the bounce, the squash and stretch. Everything looks incredible. Apart from this part, I've always thought this looked kind of weird. And here we are! Sonic Colors! Now, I am running this on an emulator, which means I can play it in 1080p, which is unfortunately not what you'll get running it on your ordinary everyday Wii. I think playing it on the Wii U upscales it though, so if you've got one, go ahead. The game starts you off running in Tropical Resort. No cutscene, nothing. Go and play. The first act is brilliant. Even though the 3D sections are a bit flat at times, there's plenty of action to be had. It's got some great tutorials without actually being tutorials, like how here if you boost it shows that you can draw in rings. Fair warning, if you notice me playing badly or weirdly throughout the early levels, it's because I'm trying to get accustomed to the controls. I normally play this on a Wiimote and Nunchuck, and I actually recommend it over the gamepad. The game was made to be played with a Wiimote and Nunchuck, and you'll see why. Playing on a controller means a lot of buttons go unused, and it just feels weird. You move Sonic with the joystick, of course, and you jump with the A and boost with B. You can actually double jump, which is really weird, because the last game you did that in was Sonic R. 
I'm not sure what exactly to think of this. I mean, on one hand, it saved my life countless times, but on the other, if the jump was better, it wouldn't need to be there. You can also do the homing attack with A, and sometimes instead of double jumping, Sonic will just shoot off to who knows where, more often than not, leading to an early death. His normal jump also has this weird double jump of its own. I don't know if it's super noticeable in the footage, but he loses a bit of momentum halfway through his jump and then gains some right after. It just makes the jump end up feeling really odd sometimes. The first level is also the first time you'll also hear, for lack of a better name, the announcer guy. That wasn't outstanding or amazing announcer guy, I was just mashing A. Also, for some reason Sonic gains height when he does tricks, I've no idea how or why, but that's a theory for another day. A GAME THEORY! So after the first two acts, there's finally a cutscene explaining why Sonic's here. Also, you'll notice that the cutscenes are in the native resolution. I'm not sure why this is, I don't think they're pre-rendered. Maybe the emulator just doesn't know how to scale them up, who knows. They're probably just pre-rendered. It's well done though, because I didn't even notice when I was playing it on the Wii. This is also when you'll get to hear Roger Craig Smith's Sonic voice in full effect for the first time. I'm gonna be honest, I hated his Sonic voice when I played this game. Too deep, too trying hard to be cool, stuffed crust pizza, you know, all the reasons why people don't like his take on Sonic. It has grown on me over time, and while I still don't think he's the best choice for modern Sonic, him voicing Boom Sonic is perfect! I think because they could create a version of Sonic to act accordingly to how Roger records his lines, it comes out astoundingly well. Of course, no Sonic voice actor has been perfect on their first game. I mean, can you remember Ryan Drummond in Sonic Adventure? Watch out! You're gonna crash! Ah! I don't place the blame squarely on Roger Craig Smith, of course, because some of these lines are just bloody terrible. Hey, Tails. You missed the BBBE. Huh? Best boss beating ever! Oh, that's right. Tails also got a new voice actor, this time it being Kate Higgins. She, she's pretty good. What? Well, I mean, Tails is a bit of a smart ass, which I don't particularly think suits him, but I'll just put that down again to the lines the actors were given. I am actually planning to create a whole video on my thoughts on the Sonic actors later on down the line, so I'll just stop here. So we learned from Sonic and Tails that this is Eggman's interstellar amusement park, and that they've broken into Sabotage's evil plot, whatever that may be. Now from the start we can see that Tails is unsure of whether Eggman really has an evil scheme or not, with Sonic assuring him that he's just hiding it out of sight somewhere. I like this. It shows why Tails is the sidekick instead of the hero. We have to remember that Tails is still just a kid no matter how smart he is. Sonic's not an idiot either, as much as the later games make him out to be, and it's nice to see the writers acknowledge this. Of course, the writers also acknowledge burp jokes and such, so who actually knows whether this was intentional or not. Soon Sonic and Tails discover Eggman's robots, Orbot and newcomer Cubot, trying to capture these little aliens, which we later learn are called Wisps. Sonic promptly saves them, and suddenly merges with the Cyan Wisp to be lasered right into the profile creation screen. Wow, okay, so no joke, this is what they started me with. It's perfect, plus one point to Sonic Colors. And thus, ends Knuckles' first and last appearance in Sonic Colors. There's no Knuckles picture though, so I guess Eggman will have to do. Now it's back into the levels, and in these levels is where we discover more of Sonic's moves. First up is the quick step back from Sonic Unleashed, which, because of the hole being created for the Wiimote and Nunchuck thing, is also mapped to the joystick. It's only available when going at a high enough speed, and only when the little arrow lightning bolt is at the bottom of the screen. Another one of Sonic's moves is drifting, which is, again, back from Sonic Unleashed. It's only available when the icon appears at the bottom of the screen, like the quick step, and it uses the B button too, so no boosting and drifting areas, I'm afraid. Finally, of course, we have the Cyan Wisp, which is encapsulated for easy consumption. With the help of the Wisp, Sonic turns into a laser, I guess, and whizzes through at laser speed, I guess. In 3D sections, you can only aim horizontally and in 2D vertically. What I also didn't mention before is that Sonic can only boost with the help of the White Wisps, which you can either find in capsules or very rarely in Eggman's robots. I guess Sonic forgot how to fully utilize ring power, I guess? I see that they're bringing the Wisp boosting back in Sonic Forces, and I'm gonna be honest, I'm not a fan of it, and I'd rather just see the Wisps dry up and die. But hey, I am willing to see what they'll do with them and how they'll work them into the story, if at all. Oh yeah, and Sonic can also stomp and wall jump. I'm still waiting for another Sonic game with a triangle jump, the last ones having it being Sonic Heroes and Shadow the Hedgehog. I guess Lost World kinda had it, and I know Sonic can run on walls now, but come on, adventure style gameplay will come back one day. Let's make sure they do it right. So with another two levels done, we're treated to another cutscene. Gotta connect the framostatic capacitor to the maximizing modulationizer. 
Yes, Tails, we get it. You're smart. We know. Tails is building a device which will allow them to communicate with the wisps, and Sonic tries to convince Tails that he turns into a laser. Uh, I find that hard to believe. <laughs> the other Tails would have believed him. Why would he lie to you? So one thing I need to get off my chest here is how shoddy the mouth animations are. I don't know whether it was because they needed to sync the mouth movements to other languages or whatever, but it's incredibly poorly done and looks incredibly lazy. Hell, I can do better than this. It doesn't take long at all. Just say you're going to destroy us and stop embarrassing yourself. Curse you! This baby could fly. Where have I seen them before? <laughs> <laughs> they did fix it up a bit in Sonic Generations, and in Lost World, the lip movements are much snappier, although a bit off in terms of what mouth motion makes what sound. The body animation itself isn't bad, though. Nice bounce back and all that, no issues here. And after the cutscene, we head onward to the last two acts of Tropical Resort. This is where I start having bigger issues with this game. Sonic Colors is not a 3D Sonic game. Sonic Colors is a 2D Sonic game, which sometimes switches to 3D. No matter how it was marketed, this is not a 3D Sonic game. I first realized this about halfway through my first playthrough. Look, I find 3D Modern Sonic a lot of fun. I find 2D Modern Sonic still fun, but to a much lesser extent. I just have no idea why Sega keeps making modern Sonic games have 2D sections. It baffles me. Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 don't have 2D sections, and Sonic and Shadow sections are the most fun in the game. Sonic Heroes didn't have 2D sections, Shadow the Hedgehog didn't have 2D sections, Sonic 06 didn't have 2D sections, oh okay, now I see why. Still, having 80% or more of what is primarily marketed as a 3D Sonic game as 2D gameplay just screams lazy to me. I get that it's harder to make 3D levels, I do, I really do. But don't do this. I would much rather have a refined 3D formula rather than the switching we have now. Leave 2D to Classic Sonic. Hell, when you have Classic Sonic in the same game as Modern Sonic, you have absolutely zero need for Modern Sonic to even touch his pinky toe into 2D. Modern Sonic is not made for 2D. His physics just don't mesh well with precise platforming. Again, we have a different hedgehog for that. Or, or the same one. You know what I mean. That's it. Round over. I mean, at least you're going fast, right? These tropical resort levels are fast paced for the most part, and there is fun to be had, don't get me wrong. A weird thing these 2D sections seem to have though is an abundance of invisible walls. For example, at the start here I thought there might be a secret here, a red ring or the such, you know. But no, just an invisible wall. And over here I saw a red ring down below, so I turned back to get it and... Yeah, another invisible wall. I, I don't get it. Why can't I go down? It won't break the game. The path below isn't on another plane of existence. I just want to explore. Let me do it. Another thing these 2D sections have is an abundance of blocks. You know, the sort of thing you'd seen in a Mario game. This, above all else, screams lazy. This is some Mario Maker shit right here, and also a good reason why 2D is easier to make than 3D. So I brushed over the red rings there a second ago, and you can find 5 per level, if the invisible walls feel like letting you, and using them you can unlock levels in game land. Beating all of them will nab you with the 7 Chaos Emeralds, which you can use mid-level to go supersonic. This was the first modern Sonic game to do this, and it was a brilliant addition, and one which continues throughout the later modern Sonic games. I didn't get them all on this playthrough though, once is enough for me I'm afraid. Anyway, so the last act in Tropical Resort is Act 6. Yeah, there are six acts per world, although, to be honest, they're all pretty short, save a select few. Look, I finished this one in less than a minute. To be honest, I'd rather have two or three bigger and more thought out acts rather than six short ones, and to be honest, having six feels, again, lazy. In the majority of these acts, you can see recycled bits from other acts, and they don't even bother changing it. Hell, you could have mirrored this bit and I wouldn't have complained. But it doesn't look like I'm running through a different area. It looks like I'm running through the same place twice. Look at this, this is a whole act. Running in a circle is a whole act. It ends when you press a button on the side. All I'm doing in this level is holding down B and moving left and right. It's not fun. This is not level design. Okay, let's just get back to Tropical Resort. At least I know that's not- Oh, son of a bitch. What? Is this seriously a Sonic game? Who thought this was a good idea? Sonic R might have tank controls, but at least it didn't have me literally doing nothing waiting for platforms. Oh, and another thing. The boost button is also the same as air dashing, which means when you have no boost, you do an air dash instead. This saved my ass. But if I'd had boost, I would have rocketed to my demise. Look, if you're gonna have buttons do multiple things, do it right. Sonic Unleashed for PS3 and 360 didn't have an air boost, just a dash. When I pressed the boost button in mid-air, I knew what I was getting myself into. I didn't have to take my eyes off Sonic and check how much boost I had and calculate how far I'd go if I did press it, all before dying because no one's brain works that fast! I like this game! I actually like it! And I've got no idea why! It's a goddamn mystery! Also, I played the PS3 demo of Sonic Unleashed, if that's what you're wondering. So every act of Tropical Resort has been completed. We finally get to see Eggman in the flesh, and he's been busy capturing aliens so he can harness their... hyper... go-on... power. Eggman, you had the chance to name it something good, and you went with Hyper Go On. 
I mean, what did I expect? This is the man who embraced the nickname Eggman. I don't know why I thought he would have improved. So Sonic and Eggman square off and Eggman unleashes his latest and greatest creation upon him. At least I know he won't screw it up. And thus commences the easiest boss battle in Sonic history. After that, we get another cutscene and it seems that Tails has got his alien translator working. Turns out one of the wisps they've saved is called Yakka, and he and his fellow wisps are being captured in order to make underwear to be worn by Salad. These are the kind of jokes in Sonic Colors. Sonic breaks the fourth wall and then it's off to the next planet. Two areas are unlocked at this point, Sweet Mountain and Starlight Carnival. Logic dictates we go to Sweet Mountain first, so let's go. Also, I have a hankering for some donuts. Uh, hamburgers? What, wait, why are the hamburgers here? Hamburgers aren't sweet! I think this is a good enough time to appreciate the music. Sonic Colors has amazing music, if you couldn't already tell. Each planet has at least three different act versions of their theme, each really good in their own right. Even though I prefer the more electric guitar scented level themes like in Sonic Heroes, I can't deny this is some solid stuff. Well done, Sonic Colors. You deserve my applause. Well done. What? Who are you? Hi, I'm Bear Grylls. Can I join in? No? Go away? Oh! Alright. I'll be back next time! Until then! Celebrity appearances in their finest, folks. Sweet Mountain suffers from the same formula as Tropical Resort, starting out strong and then quickly moving into 2D sections until that's all you're doing. I'd also like to talk about Sonic's running animation for a second. I, I, I don't have anything against it, really. I mean, it could be improved a bit to make him seem more energetic and lively, but I want to talk about the startup. God, I hate how he walks. Not the way he walks, just the fact that he walks in general. This happens in Sonic Unleashed and Sonic 4 too, and I hate it. You don't start off running by walking, that's not how it works. Sonic Heroes, Sonic Adventure, Shadow the Hedgehog, Sonic 06, Sonic 1, 2 and 3 and Knuckles all start off with jogging. Why must this Sonic feel so inclined to walk? Get off your lazy ass and run, Sonic! I know that you might have absolutely no idea where this is coming from, and I understand that I might be the only person in the world who feels this way. Again, that's not amazing, announcer guy. All I did was smash A. Ow! Here in Sweet Mountain, we run into two new wisps. The Rocket Wisp, which, you guessed it, turns Sonic into a slice of stuffed crust pizza. Just joking, gotcha. He actually turns into a rocket. And the Yellow Drill, which allows him to go underneath the ground or in water. Oh god, no. I'm stuck here. I'm gonna die of salvation. Unless I die of suffocation first. Oh, thank my Jesus, I'm out of here! Sonic the Hedgehog, increasing comprehension of your mortality, one game at a time. Okay, real quick before we do Act 4, let's take a look at the Sonic Colors gameplay trailer. Ooh, nice! Now let's play the actual game! When I bought the game, I didn't expect this, nor did I want it. Again, who thought this was a good idea? And every planet has this sort of shit. Aquarium Park, Asteroid Coaster, what? Who? Wh why? This is a good level design and it's not fun! It's a good thing you can just walk through these things or I would have lost my goddamn mind. At the end of every act, you get rewarded based on how well you did. B rank is one life, A is two, S is three. There's always one extra life hidden away in one of the numbers, so go nuts before Sonic feels like he's had enough. Oh, God damn it! So here's the boss of Sweet Mountain, and he's not too tough. <gasps> I knew Dessert Ruins reminded me of something. After the boss, we get a small cutscene between Sonic and Tails. Nothing is said that we don't already know or have figured out by ourselves. It's kind of just here to remind you that Tails actually exists. It's also here to remind you that the writing team had absolutely no idea what the fuck they were doing. Baldy nose hair! Geez, what were they thinking? <laughs> the next planet, or well, more just an area, is Starlight Carnival. You could have told me that this was on a PS3 or a 360 and I wouldn't have batted an eye. This level is gorgeous. That is, until you go inside. I, I don't get it. What, you have so much to work with on the outside of these ships, and you choose to make the majority of the levels inside? We could have been hurled from ship to ship like an egg fleet, taking in the incredible view, but no. Welcome to Minecraft. Here are some blocks. It's not like Carnival, you get two new wisps. The cube wisp, which allows you to change certain blocks into rings and rings into blocks. No, 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 no! What? Who? The, the puzzle shit! What? Why is it? It literally stops you dead when you use this! Why are you doing this? Why are you thrusting this upon me?! Look, I'm one of the guys who really want to see Sonic succeed, okay? I want to see Sega improve on Sonic's formula with every game. But this is a step backwards from Sonic Unleashed. I like going fast in a Sonic game, and if you give me a button to go fast, I want to go fast! Don't make me stop. Don't make me press buttons. This isn't platforming. And for God's sake, don't treat me like a child. Sonic's fan fanbase is not children. We don't want to hear about Boy the McNose here. 
I mean, I can see that Sega's improving on this one with Sonic Mania and Sonic Forces. I mean, who knows what the actual story of Sonic Forces is going to be. But I will state that I'm not bashing on the entire Sonic series. I'm not saying it's bad where it is. I think Sonic Generations is brilliant. Sonic Forces looks good so far. Mania, <laughs> extravagant. Uh, but again, this is just a bash on Sonic Colors. Not even a bash. Good things are coming up. After the break. There's no break. All right, let's, let's get into it. The other color power-up you get is Hover, which can do the light speed dash and, of course, Hover. You know, despite how much I don't actually like the Wisps, and despite how slow this thing is, I have to admit it was a pretty smart idea to section off some of Sonic's moves into certain Wisps. Can you imagine the boost button also being used for the light speed dash? That shit would be horrendous. Also, don't keep pressing B when you're hovering, because this game does not pause, even for a second when you exit a Wisps form. Even though the level looks great, I will admit there are plenty of sections where your controller is literally cut off into one button, that being boost, which by the way will not increase your speed in these sections, so don't even bother. And these spring sections can just go die in a hole, god damn it, as if pressing buttons wasn't bad enough. Now we have these slow ass, basically auto-scrolling sections. No thanks. At the end of these acts, we're treated to a small cutscene where Eggman springs a surprise trap on Sonic and Tails, hitting Tails with a mind control beam. We learn three things in this cutscene. One, the mind control beam is so slow that Tails can get several words out before it actually hits him. Two, Tails is really fast, I'm talking Sonic speeds here. And three, the writers still don't seem to give any shits because this goes nowhere. They could have really put some depth into this. Maybe a Tails fight, something, anything. They pull this shit again in Lost World and it goes nowhere. What happened to the writers who weren't afraid to kill off children and use the word damn? 16,000 times. Again, it's not the end of the world, but it could have been so much more. The boss of this area is quite fun, and also the last level boss of the game. I'm not joking, every boss from here on out, aside from the final one, is basically a reskin of a previous boss. Planet Wisp, Tropical Resort, Aquarium Park, Sweet Mountain, Asteroid Coaster, does this look familiar? Now granted these bosses have made changes to differentiate them, but I've said it many times before, it still looks very lazy. Anyway, the boss itself is actually a lot of fun, as I said, and it has a really nice theme as well. I'm quite happy with this one, even if I can only quick step. The next area is Planet Wisp, the home world of our Hyper Go On capsules. Make sure to take one in the morning and one before bed. Again, starts out strong, ends on a flat note. Certain sections of the world really emphasize how much Sonic shouldn't be doing precise platforming. You also get access to another Wisp, this one being the Spiked Wisp, which sticks to walls and allows you to do the spin dash. It's my favorite of all the Wisps. You go fast and it adds a fun mechanic Sonic didn't have before. It doesn't feel like a use this to get through mechanic. It feels like it should, a power up, not fucking Minecraft. Let's head on to the boss. No copyright law in the universe is going to stop me! That applies to me too! No copyright strike in the universe will stop me from uploading this video! Actually, I know that I won't get a copyright strike on my video, because the company who makes these games has some self-respect and actually encourages people to create content about their games. Unlike a certain someone, I think we all know who I'm talking about! <laughs> Give it a go! Give it a go. This afterboss cutscene also has my favorite line in the game. Uh, are you talking to the broken robot who can't hear you? Uh, maybe. That's between me and the robot. More lines like that, please, and less lines like Baldy nose hair! Next up is Aquarium Park, and here we find out how bad water physics can really be. My god, if you thought Sonic 2's water parts were bad, you just wait. For some reason, Sonic can infinitely jump in water. Okay, that's another tick on the list of shit Sonic definitely can't do. And for some reason, instead of sinking like a rock, Sonic falls gently. And I mean gently, as gently as a feather falling in maple syrup, as I swear it's the most infuriating thing about this area. The infinite jumping does not help. The fans which push you do not help. The one dash you get does not help. If Sonic can infinitely jump in water, why not dashing too? These levels can get monotonous very quickly underwater, and that's a real shame because when you're out of it, you're having an absolute blast. Also this guy, what the hell do I do if I run out of boost? I can't jump, I can't dodge. Am I just supposed to get hit here? This is shit design, it comes back later and I can jump then, so what happened here? You know what, I think this is all linked. The slow fall, the infinite jumps, the no way of dodging this robot. I think Sega got raccoons to program Aquarium Park. Another thing about the wisps, sometimes they exit you prematurely to keep the flow going, and other times they'll just let you flop around in your belly like a seal until the time runs out. What's with that? After the six acts, we get another cutscene, Sonic does his famous pizza comedy routine. Was that a nod to Roger Craig Smith's pizza ad, Sega? If so, your writing team just earned some respect points back from me, well done. The boss commences, you hit the guy, tails buffs. The last area you visit before the final zone is Asteroid Coaster. The aesthetic here is brilliant! I hate the 2D sections with a passion, but my god, when you're jumping from asteroid to asteroid, there's fun to be had here. Don't oh, come on game, you know I don't give a shit about these things, just let me move. You get the final wisp in this zone, Frenzy. This wisp has been converted by Eggman in order to get his mind control juice. It's incredibly fast and destroys anything in its way, although it does slow down the bigger you get. 
Also, good luck controlling this thing in 3D sections. It controls worse than Sonic R. Something I can talk about now that I've mentioned all the Wisps is how they're only really used in 2D. Lasers almost always used in 2D. I can remember once when that wasn't the case. Rocket, 2D. Drill, 2D. Hover. Uh, actually, I think that one had some nice balance. Cube, well, what the hell do you think? Frenzy, I think twice in 3D, the rest in 2D. And Spikes, pure 2D. Again, this is a 2D game. After these acts, another cutscene happens with the most cringy dialogue I've ever heard from a Sonic game. Yes, even Sonic's I couldn't save him! Tails! Oh no! We get another blimp boss fight, which I will admit is incredibly lazily done. Same sound effects, same method. Hell, they didn't even bother changing the running strip from Starlight Carnival. That's just straight up ripped! Still, it's a fun boss fight. This type is the best out of the three, if I'm honest. Of course, that might just be because it's the only boss fight in 3D and you're continuously running. Again, they fixed this problem in Sonic Generations. The game had great bosses, apart from the last one. I mean, you know, whatever. So Sonic shuts down the final generator. Oh, they're shutting down generators holding the planets to the amusement park. I probably should have mentioned that before. <laughs> Sonic congratulates Tails on doing a good job for some reason and the two go to see how the freed aliens are doing and tails has some really odd lines did they mix up sonic and tails lines with all the generators destroyed we can blow this joint and head home we did it dude we i don't remember you fighting off any insane robots true well good job to you on inventing a translator that allowed us to speak to the aliens and figure out exactly what we needed to do so we weren't running around the park looking like idiots <laughs> oh no wait that was me. Tails, you smarmy piece of shit. Sonic is clearly joking. He just congratulated you on a job well done literally 30 seconds ago. Are you that fucking uptight you can't even take a joke because he didn't need to say well done or thank you. He was just being a good friend. We didn't need you to do the job. It was incredibly simple. Fine and destroy the generators. Sonic was saving aliens before you even knew what they were, you piece of shit. Sonic didn't need you, Tails. You slowed him down. You got in the way of the mind control device. And don't give me that shit like you saved Sonic from it. That thing would have run out of energy 20 seconds later. You were dead weight, you hear me, you two-tailed bitch. Dead weight. Nobody loves you, nobody ever will, and I hope you die in Sonic Forces. Good point. Oh, Tails was joking too. Oh, okay, I get it now. Uh, sorry, Tails. I guess. But Eggman isn't having any of that and goes to unleash a super mind control ray at Earth. Unfortunately for him, the arm of the very first boss was launched into what I'm gonna call, I guess, an energy storage tank, so it backfires and starts imploding in on itself. Hey, hold on a second. Mind control device, the incredibly small chance that the arm got wedged in the tank, Tails being mind controlled. <gasps> Sonic Forces takes place in a universe where Eggman's machine didn't malfunction, Tails was captured and mind controlled by Eggman, that's why he's not on the trailer, and that's why there are wisps! I've done it, I'm a genius! Just don't look into any of the huge plot holes I've missed, like why classic Sonic is there or why Eggman would need big robots if everyone is mind controlled, just go with it. The final level is a race to the space elevator, which takes place on the rail for the space elevator. I'm not 100% sure what's going on here, but somehow Sonic and Tails make it to the entrance after running the wrong way, and Eggman shows up for one last fight. Tails, being the little bitch he is, doesn't think they can beat him, and Sonic, pissed off with his attitude, shoves Tails in the elevator back to Earth, saying good riddance to bad rubbish. In this boss fight, just this fucking boss fight, I mean, are you kidding me with this boss fight? This boss fight is just, it's just incredible! Holy shit, I am not pulling your leg! This, this right here is the best part of the game! This shows how great this game can be! More of this! I want more of this! I don't care that it's easy, I'm astounded that something this good is even in here! First off, this boss is fully 3D. Second, it has the most epic music in the entire game which syncs up to what you're doing. Three, you get your alien buddies that help you along the way, even the one that helped you just play Minecraft. They float beside you, increasing in numbers each time you wall up Eggman. This, this is a final boss fight! The music, it actually syncs up! It's so good! So, so just some notes that, uh, that things I would change about this boss fight. I really like it, but there are some things it could improve on. Uh, for one, uh, so Eggman uses the, the anti-wisp energy in order to uh, use his abilities, and he merges them together. So, like, he has uh, Frenzy and Minecraft. No, I'm not gonna let that go. Weirdly enough, uh, Drill, Rocket, and Hover aren't used at all, and I, I think that's kind of a missed opportunity. They were in the DS version. I was gonna grab it, but it's under the Wii version. Uh, so, I mean, they could have put a bit of extra effort in and maybe had a drill and rocket together, maybe like having shooting rockets fly at you and you've got to quick step them away. I mean, it's similar to the other stuff that's happened, but come on. And, and Hover could have had like uh, flow, it could have been like some sort of anti gravity thing uh, where you've got to dodge floating hazards or something. Also, when Eggman uses these abilities, uh, the announcer guy, the same freaking announcer guy, starts speaking, Spikes, Rocket, whatever. And I think it would have been really awesome if they would have maybe, because it's anti-wisp energy, nego wisp energy, that his voice could have sounded like distorted and kind of creepy, crazy. 
you know, and then it would mean, because it's anti-energy, you know, that, that would have been cool instead of just being the same one that Sonic has. Because, I mean, who's the announcer working for here? Sonic or Eggman? If it's going to be Eggman, we need to have a talk, you and me, announcer guy. And the last thing is put the boss in Sonic Generations. I mean, I know that can't happen now, but um, damn it, a man can dream! DREAM! PISS OFF! All of a sudden, the black hole is advancing upon Sonic with surprising speed, and Sonic knows he's got to get out of there fast before he dies, but not before saying a snappy one-liner, and thus commences the final act. Sonic is eventually engulfed by the black hole, but is saved by the wisps, and dropped off on Earth before saying goodbye to the aliens forever. Forever. Credits roll. And boy, do they. That shit goes on for 13 minutes. I counted. Damn it! I hate this game, but I love it too. I hate the stopping, I hate the button pressing, and god, I hate Minecraft. But I'll be darned if I don't love running, love the incredible music, and god damn it, I love Sonic. Yes, in that way! I hate it, but I love it too, and a lot of other people do. If you've got a Wii, and you like Sonic, I don't have to tell you to go buy the game, you've already got it. And with that all being said, thank you very much for watching the Point. video- Point! No, stop it, announcer guy, the video's over! Annoyed! No, no, that doesn't, that's not how it works! Works! <laughs> now you're just repeating what I'm saying, that's, that's not how this works! Go away! Nobody likes you! You're not needed! Alright. Thank you all very much for watching the EXPLOSION! Wait, what? Okay, well I hope you could scrounge some enjoyment out of that one. <laughs> and it seems that in my mind I realized what was working on YouTube, because uh, my next video was another Sonic game. I guess you could say multiple Sonic games for that, I don't know why I said a singular Sonic game. Anyway, this is something that I was uh, interested in doing at the time, and I'm still interested in doing, and I should go back to doing more of these Sonic fan games, because they are a lot of fun to just go through and play a bunch of different ones. Uh, I do actually stream occasionally, and when I do, uh, every year Sage comes around and I, I, I tend to... Uh, uh, do a couple of streams on those games and that's always fun so you know there's always new content out to make videos on so maybe I'll go back to it one day and do some more. This was also the first video where I started making fun of all the people that were asking me for an Unleashed review. Uh, then later on I would do an Unleashed review and not finish it which I plan on finishing soon. I uh, did something really stupid on stream and uh, now I'm stuck uh, having to do that again because I well, I lost all the Sonic Unleashed footage, and that's why I couldn't finish that video. <laughs> Damn, I'm running out of ideas for Sonic videos fast. So what do I do? What can I do? What do the people want? Do Sonic Unleashed. Sonic Unleashed. You should play Sonic Unleashed. Play Sonic Unleashed. I've got it! Sonic Fan Games! What? Living in the city! It's like a roller coaster! Hello, welcome back to another episode of Radical Soda! Uh, it's a show. Uh, you call this a show? Bear Grylls, not again, come on man! Hello everyone, it's me, Bear Grylls, and today we'll be looking at Sonic the Hedgehog fan games. Grylls, come on man, stop it, we're not doing that. What, are we not looking at Sonic fan games? Well, yes we are, but- Great! Then let's get started then! The first fan game we'll be looking at today is- Hey, 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 this is my show, not yours, you're not invited! Not even just to play- No! You'll see. One day you're going to bite off more than you can chew, more than anyone can chew, and then when that day comes, I'll be here, and I'll be laughing. Until next time! Fan games. With every fan base, there comes people with enough talent to create their own content about whatever it is they're so excited about. This can range from animations, video games, artwork, to... Fan fiction... Sonic knew he had to act fast. The Chaos Emeralds were vibrating with incredible speed. He turned to Matt from Tails Channel. What do we do? Matt looked down at Sonic. He leaned down to whisper into Sonic's ear. What is up guys, Matt the owner of Tails Channel here, bringing you the latest in Sonic news and updates. But today, we're only going to talk about one of those things. Fan games. Sonic fan games, to be exact. So we're going to go through Sonic Time Twisted, uh, Green Hill Paradise Act 2, and a special surprise, which you won't know about until the very end. Please don't skip through the video. 
You know, there are a multitude of Sonic games on the internet nowadays, and it really isn't hard to find them. I mean, just type Sonic games into Google and you'll have many a Sonic game, although they'll all be Flash games from before 2010. I remember playing these sort of games back in the day. Maybe one day I'll do a video on them. So, Sonic Time Twisted. I found it on Game Jolt along with a slew, just an absolute slew of Sonic.exe games. My god, there's probably a Sonic.exe game for every legit game there is on this website. And because we're speaking about fan games, this is also the website where I uploaded my Markiplier fan games, so if you want to check them out, don't. They're terrible. I'm pretty sure Sonic Time Twisted was in Sage, the Sonic Amateur Games Expo 2, but that comes but once a year, my boy, and if you try it any other time, you'll be met with this screen. Inviting. The game itself is still in early access, so keep that in mind as we go through it, and you'll be able to find the link to the game's page along with the other games I'll be going through today in the description. So let's get right on into it, shall we? I mean, there's no point waiting unless it's for Sonic Mania, in which case I'm all over that shit. So let's start this all off. It's time for Sonic Time Twisted. Oh, piss off. Oh, jeez. Okay, here we are. Sonic Time Twisted. Hey, Sonic, you get stung or something? That finger's looking a little swollen there. Ah, cool. Three playable characters. Oh, oh Knuckles has his hat. Okay, we're going with Knuckles. Finally, someone I can relate with. All right, where's, where's my Knuckles hat? I don't have a Knuckles hat. Oh, no. All right, level selection time. Also, this is how fast the menu can go. Hurry up! So if you couldn't already tell, this game is inspired by Sonic CD and Sonic 3 Knuckles. I gotta say, I'm not the biggest fan of the Sonic CD-esque style, but the game looks really nice. I mean, we've got our three heroes here in the tornado, Sonic, Tails, Knuckles. Hey, wait, where's his hat? How could you do this to me, poorly printed Knuckles? I thought we were... friends. Wait, didn't some call me Johnny do this joke first? Hell yeah, I did, bitch! So, this is a classic 2D Sonic game. You get about what you'd expect. You roll, you jump, you play pinball. Hey, whoa, 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 now, isn't it a little early to start with this kind of shit? Actually, all of the levels are in a bit of a weird order. The next level is an ice zone, and the one after that is like Palm Tree Panic, Sonic CD's first level. I'm guessing this isn't the final level order, and if it is, well, all the more power to you. I guess it's nice to see someone mixing it up. We kind of need it after Lost Worlds by the numbers Mario style approach. I'm guessing the Knuckles sprites are from Knuckles Chaotix, although instead of running normally, Knuckles flails his arms around like he's running for his life. Ah! His gliding form's also very pancake-like, which leads to some very funny moments. Now, as fun as this game is, it's not perfect. Of course, there are a few tiny things here and there that aren't so great, as you'd expect with a free Sonic game. I repeat, this game is absolutely free, so of course there's gonna be a few things here and there. It's just remarkable that there's so few of them in the first place. You gotta also remember that the game's in early access with the full game coming out April 19th! Ah, oh, son of a bitch! This is gonna be coming it real close to when this video comes out, and then bam, this video's irrelevant. Damn. Damn. The game's main problem I've been having centers around the rings. For some reason, the ring sound effect is pretty loud, which in turn caused me to turn down the volume, which meant I was missing out on some of those funky tunes. I don't know whether the music is all new or just recycled from previous Sonic games, but I didn't recognize any of it, so well done either way. Back to the rings though. For some reason, whenever I got hit, I just randomly gained another 50 rings. I've no idea why, and it only happens sometimes. It gets even more confusing when you die because you had no invincibility frames when you got hit by an enemy, but then you also obtained 50 rings at the same time. Another thing that tended to happen was occasionally getting wedged in the floor. I could easily jump out though, so like it wasn't a restart the level kind of deal. But again, none of these problems are going to be relevant soon because the full game's coming out and it's been beta tested and all. I mean, I had a couple of issues with the levels here and there, but that was mainly just the pinball bits because I suck at them. Tails controls just like he did in Sonic 3. Hey, hold on a second, that's Metal Sonic! I guess he was angry about face planting into a door back in Sonic CD because he's back in full force, this time sporting an arsenal of laser eyes and flying. Watch out there, Knuckles, he'll attack you with his face. Again, what the hell is with these rings? I pick one up in 40x in my body. What the hell is going on here? Damn it! I, I, I can't... Come down here and fight like a man! Robot. Man. Droid. What? I jumped from there before and I didn't hit shit. Why did that jump suddenly decide to have the strength of a thousand men? So after that act, I switched to Sonic so I could see the past version of the second act. Yeah, that's right. The inspiration from Sonic CD didn't go nowhere. You can find it pass through time travel poles to be whisked off to the past and future, I'm assuming, in the final version. I didn't know how they worked at first, so I didn't get to do it with Tails. Damn it, I've been stuck here for ages. Where the hell do I go? Spin dash here? D no. And running fast just puts me back into the loop. Don't tell me I have to. 
Go slow! Yeah, I had to go slow. God, I'm just terrible. If they didn't give me all those rings, I would have failed long ago. <gasps> There's the hat! I knew you wouldn't let me down, Knuckles. My boy! The next game up is Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix. Sounds like some Square Enix shit right there. So, bit of a weird story here. I was looking at Sonic fan games for this video a couple nights ago, and I found this game again after first seeing it on Steam Train on the Game Grumps channel, of course, where else? I thought it would be a good addition to the video, so I was like, yeah, sure, I'll download it. And then the morning after, the literal morning after, I got a comment from the legendary man himself, Supersonic68. He... he made the game. First Nebrock Rock, then some call me Johnny, now Supersonic 68, and I know you're subscribed Tails channel, I saw it on my subscriber list before YouTube changed their shit. Soon I will rise to the top of YouTube's ranks, crushing anyone in my way. Oh no, he is too strong. His Sonic videos are just much gooder than ours. And I will laugh my manly laugh, ho, 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 and shout my famous catchphrase. What is up guys, Matt the owner of Tails channel, bring it you! This game actually became pretty famous when it was first released. Even if you just search its name into Google, you get articles titled things like Fans make the 3D Sonic game we deserve. Fans do what Sega won't, make an awesome 3D Sonic game. And Fans embarrass Sega by making a good 3D Sonic game. I guess all these people just forgot about, uh, you know, every good Sonic game because that shit's ridiculous. Is Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix Super Edition good? Yeah, it's fun. But does it embarrass the likes of Generations, Colors, and Heroes? No, of course not. Paradise doesn't stand a chance. It's made by a small team of fans for free. I guess these articles were made back in the era when shitting on Sonic was considered cool. But, I mean, this game was made in 2016. <laughs> Did Generations secretly suck and I've just been brainwashed into thinking it's good? I mean, now I'm second guessing myself. I mean, for all I know, Sonic Labyrinth can be regarded as a timeless classic, and Sonic Boom Rise Lyric saved the gaming industry. And now, don't get me wrong, Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix Super Edition Mega Collection is a fun game, so let's get right on into it, shall we? Oh, cool, listen to that Sonic 3 Safe Selection remix, done by T-Lopes, if I'm not mistaken. One of my favorite artists. In fact, I first started listening to his stuff a couple months before Mania was announced, and was happy as balls to hear that he was doing the music. The Green Hill theme here is also done by T-Lopes. It's nice, suits it well. Oh. Oh my. It, the music just... cuts off, huh? It's kind of creepy. Alright, I'm just gonna get this out of the way right now. DAMN! DAMN GRAPHICS, BRUH! The tutorials are done via these signs and this voice, giving me some Sonic 06 vibes here. Your top speed will increase dramatically. With the money, you can shop in town. So Sonic controls mainly like modern Sonic with some major changes here and there. For one, he can no longer boost, instead you have to earn this by entering MOCK SPEED! You can do this by rolling down a hill, gaining some speed, and then exiting the roll to speed your way through the level until you either hit a wall or stop yourself. I've wanted a 3D Sonic game to have a roll button for the longest time, and this game finally delivers! As well as Sonic Utopia, but that'll be for another day. When going at Mach speed, it's surprisingly easy to control Sonic. You can turn easily enough, it's not boost, I'll give it that. While it's really fun to do this, I did have a couple of problems with Mach speed. That mainly just being randomly stopping on an incline, or randomly flying off a cliff when running up it. It happens very randomly though, I've gone times without having a single problem, and then others when I just can't, I just, I just can't fucking... God, come on! The main focus of this game is the momentum-based gameplay. Sonic controls around this, having his jumps and homing attack carry your momentum so you can really build up some speed. Unfortunately, this makes precise platforming a bit of a challenge because Sonic controls so stiffly, but if you know what you're doing in this level from the get-go, you can finish it really easy without anything like this needed. Well, damn it! You can also spin dash by holding B and repeatedly pressing A. It's kind of awkward to do, you might accidentally shoot off to who knows where, but I'm assuming it's easier on keyboard. Its usefulness is about a mix between Sonic Adventure and Sonic 06's, meaning it's not exactly powerful on its own, but it's really just here so you can get some quick speed so you can unfurl and start running again. Then again, I've seen other people just go absolutely ham with this move, and I can't even go up a goddamn cliff. Oh yeah, you can also stomp. The stomp is weird. It lags a bit before Sonic actually stomps, which means you can't really use it for precise platforming, and it's so friggin' fast it almost looks like Sonic just teleports to the ground. The first thing I noticed when playing was the camera. You can control it with the right stick or the left trigger and right trigger like Sonic Heroes, but it also follows your every move, meaning as soon as you move left or right, 
it'll move with you. I get that you'll be turning around a lot because the level's so explorative, but if you just want to move slightly to the right or left and the camera causes you to turn it too much, it could mess with the platforming. The only other problem I had with this game was Sonic's weird head wobble. I've seen this a lot with GDK Sonic games, so it's probably just a thing with Sonic's rigging or something, who knows. So what does this game do well? Well, this fan game requires you to learn what Sonic can and can't do and use your knowledge in order to succeed. Like this part here, I failed time and time again until I finally got a grasp of Sonic's momentum and weight and did the whole thing in one go. That feels good. It's really satisfying to feel like you're getting better at a Sonic game without utilizing M-Speed or glitches. And then you go watch someone else's playthrough and feel sad again because you suck in comparison. Damn, I didn't even know that was a thing. Something you might have noticed is how you're always 100% in control of Sonic. Even when you're going through loops, there aren't any splines or predetermined paths, which leads to more sucking done by me. God, I'm just terrible. I think it's also really cool how the level is clearly meant to be explored, but there's also a set level path you can use, which is pretty fun to speedrun. Of course, you could just completely ignore that and go explore to find those sweet seven Chaos Emeralds and many more secrets, which I didn't find, granted. You know, because I suck. That being all said though, you've got a semi-open world, explorative, momentum-based Sonic game which you can also speedrun the shit out of and also find the Chaos Emeralds to go super, which again I didn't do because how many times do I have to say that I SUCK? So, should you play Green Hill Paradise Act 2 Final Mix Super Edition Mega Collection Wii.exe? Yes, it's fucking free, what the hell do you expect? So now it's time for the one, the only, the legendary... Sonic Labyrinth 2, baby! Damn, look at that perfect title screen! Damn, look at those six spin dashes! Damn, look at that incredible walking animation! Damn, this game was made in RPG Maker VX Ace! This shit just keeps getting better and better! Damn, look at those penguins! Damn, look at me die even though I had rings! Fuck this, I'm out! Wow, wasn't that a video made by me? Anyway, next up is... I... Don't like this video. I would recommend you stop watching right now. Because, <laughs> to be honest, it's quite frankly garbage. I didn't give this game the time of day. I was like, this game, I'm gonna play it just like I played Sonic 1. I rushed through it. I, I, I just finished the levels the way I thought Sonic was meant to be played at the time. And that, I mean, it is a Sonic game after all. I feel like they should have really had better level design catered to Sonic's skills and things. But uh, Sonic City is not exactly... A Sonic game in the traditional sense, obviously, it's not made to be a, a high-speed, fun action. And honestly, the more I think about it, the more I realize I was right. Some of these levels are absolute garbage, like Wacky Workbench, for instance, with the bouncing... Or I don't know if it's actually Wacky Workbench, but e either way, the ones with the bouncing floors, that one can go suck my na... Nans, nabs, nan... Forget what I'm saying. I don't think I gave this game enough credit. I'll go back to it one day. Uh, and see what I was missing out on. I know there's extra things to do, extra uh, little things to find, and maybe if I play it more like an exploration game and, and have that good mindset, I plan on going back to Sonic 3 and Sonic 2 and stuff and, and playing them for points. I saw a video about playing Sonic 3 Knuckles for points and that looked really fun, so uh, I also want to give that a go. But uh, in the meantime, uh, we're left with this video and it's not very good. Uh, so... Holy herpes, look at it. It's Sonic Gems collection again, everyone. Look at it. This thing has loads of uses. Have a delicious beverage. Wash the windows. Trim the hedges. Fight for your life. Style your hair. Living in the city. It's like a roller coaster. Hello everyone, welcome back to another episode of Radical Soda, the show where the guy in the video looks as sexy as the guy in the thumbnails. Now, as before this video was came up, what am I trying to say here? In the time this video was being made, we hit 100,000 subscribers! Woo! I noticed a big increase in subscribers and comments as I started to put up these Radical Soda videos, and I'm really happy that I managed to uh, find something that I can do that everyone enjoys. So I've got a special game for you all today, that being Sonic CD. It came right behind Sonic Colors in the uh, in the poll I did on Twitter a little while ago. Occasionally I'll do a poll on Twitter. Follow me on there. It's a great time. Oh boy! It, it took me a long time to make this script. I rewrote it about four times. Sonic CD is a bit of a bit of a weird game. So, this is another game of the Sonic Gems Collection, uh, but we won't actually be using this version today. Instead, we'll be using the improved remaster by Christian Whitehead, who is the guy who also did the Sonic 1 and 2 remasters. Where's my Sonic 3 Knuckles remaster? I'm, I'm still wondering that. 
Now this means we've got a few extra options here, for example, we can pick between the US or Japanese soundtrack, as they differed between the two countries. I've already finished the game once via Gems Collection long ago, and that used the US soundtrack, so for this video we'll be trying out the Japanese music. From what I've heard, it's superior in comparison. Actually, to be honest, many people think that this is a superior Sonic game outright. Uh, eights and nines out of tens on many websites, with the occasional tens sprinkled in. And some people just claim it's the best Sonic game outright. But can a game I actually hadn't even heard of until I bought the Gems Collection really be that good? Well, let's find out. No. No, it can't. Wow, it's really odd to be hearing anything other than Sonic Boom being played over this opening. I guess the one thing that really stuck out about the US version of this game was Sonic Boom. Heck, even Crush 40 did a cover of it. Christian Whitehead really did a great job with all these extra options here. It's even got a sound effects and music volume option, which is great because I have a problem with some of the older Sonic games with the ring sound effect, which sounds like it's being played through a foghorn. Let's start with the story, shall we? Sonic's on his way to check out Little Planet, a small planet, <laughs> well gee, no joke, that teleports to this location, I guess, once a year. It turns out that Eggman's gotten there first because he's chained up Little Planet to the Earth, preventing its escape, and at the same time mechanizing everything on it. Or is it roboticizing, or is that just the cartoons? That basically sums it up. Sonic goes to save the day, we get introduced to Amy Rose, who I guess is visiting Little Planet, how she got up here in the first place is anyone's guess, and Metal Sonic, a fan favorite rival who appears every now and again, even today. There's also a new set of gems to collect, the Time Crystals, which has the ability to manipulate time. You know, even though Sonic can literally just travel through time by going through a goddamn pole, but I don't know, who am I to judge? This isn't the only thing in the Sonic universe that doesn't make sense. And here we are, Palm Tree Panic. Every level name starts with two of the same letter. Collision Chaos, Wacky Workbench, Quartz Quadrant. Somebody at Sega had a hard on for alliteration. Hey, um, me. Do you need anything from the store? Yeah, actually. How about some, uh, perfect potatoes? <laughs> uh, okay. Anything else? Absolutely, we could always use more crisp cake. Cake isn't crisp. What are, you, what are you talking about? Oblong oranges! Dude, dude, I'm really going to the store. Can you- Fun fritters. Sexy self. You fucking- So right off the bat, you'll notice that Sonic Sprite is that of Sonic 2's. Yeah, even though this game was made for an upgraded version of the Mega Drive slash Genesis, it was released before Sonic 3. Personally, I'm not a fan of Sonic CD's style. To be honest, it looks pretty busy and cluttered, which leads to even more confusion about the level design, but we'll go more into that later. That being said though, you could say it looks like a Sonic game and Sonic controls like, well, like Sonic. He's got the spin jump, the spin dash, which actually has two versions this time with the remaster opting for the Sonic 2 style and the original having a somewhat harder to control, just kind of builds up momentum on its own accord thing. Sonic's also got a new move, the super peel art. I can't help but think of banana peels when I say that. The super banana peel is essentially a non-rolling spin dash, which is incredibly fast. As far as I'm aware, I think the only other games to bring this move back was Sonic Blast and Sonic Chaos, both Game Gear games. It seems to be a fan favorite, probably because of the way it looks, appearing in Sonic Time Twisted and Sonic Utopia, just to name two. That's basically it for Sonic's moves, but one thing to note, in fact it's probably very important to note, you can pass through these time travel poles, like in Sonic Time Twisted, it's out now by the way, but they're nowhere near as fun to use in comparison. In order to travel through time, you have to maintain your speed for a set amount of time until you whiz off to the past or future. Now this sounds fun in theory, and it totally could be, but in all reality, this mechanic is utter ass to use, as the level design isn't built around it at all. This game is very strict as to when you can go fast. You'll go fast when it wants you to, and only very rarely will you find yourself maintaining your momentum with well-timed jumps. There's just too much shit in the way. It also doesn't help that the ending is also determined by if you manage to destroy certain machines in the past and future. As if getting to the past wasn't hard enough, now you want me to find these stupid ass machines? Bitch, I can barely finish the goddamn level, there's so much going on! Look, I found this machine here, but because I'm not in the past, I can't destroy it, why not? And destroying machines in the future isn't gonna do anything, because if I killed them all in the past, they wouldn't be there in the first place! You wanna know how many machines I destroyed in my playthrough? Two! Two! And one was by accident! I just can't do it! I just don't have the patience! I get right to the end of a time travel warp only to run face first into a wall, and to make matters worse, there goes any second chance! Wanna try again? Find another goddamn pole and run into a wall again! Oh, look, I don't hate the idea of time travel in this game. Uh, in fact, I really think it's a great idea to see alternate versions of the act you're in. But I can never fucking do it! Now, levels are split into three acts like in Sonic 1, with the third act acting like a mini zone before a boss fight. Palm Tree Panic, all in all, is probably my favorite stage in the game. It's the first level I think of when you say Sonic CD. Well, that and Wacky Workbench, but that's for a completely different reason. And you're also greeted with the excited cheers of children. Little do they know, they'll soon be turning into tortured screens. 
Now, if you manage to destroy all the machines in Act 1 and 2, Act 3 will take place in the good future. And if not, well... They're all dead. All the children are dead. I should also mention if you complete Act 1 or 2 with more than 50 rings, you can leap into a giant ring to be sent to a special stage where you can destroy all the UFOs. Yes, UFOs, you heard that right. For a chance at getting a time stone. These special stages are pretty fun. I mean, they're a little unpredictable. They're no blue sphere. But all in all, they're new and enjoyable. The only problem is getting to the special stages. The levels are just littered with spikes and traps you can't see coming. Why would you put spikes right above a spring? I want to jump on the spring. You might as well just put a sign saying, fuck you up here too. Eggman comes on in to have a boss fight and... <laughs> Oh, come on, Eggman. That's, that's pathetic. It can't even hurt me. I thought you were better than this. Oh, well, oh, okay, I'll give you that, but... Haha! <laughs> the joke's on you. I just really, really suck at Sonic games. I like Sonic games. Why must I be so bad? I just want to be good. The next zone is Collision Chaos, the casino zone of Sonic CD, I guess you could call it. But I'd never have guessed just by looking at it now. Oh, this is also the first time we see Metal Sonic, who instantly kidnaps Amy Rose. Oh, god damn it, it's the machine thing all over again. Well, bye Amy, I guess I'll see you in like four zones, I guess. Now before I say anything else, I have to state that the music here is great. Actually, pretty much every level's music is pretty good. In Collision Chaos, you can even hear a little bit of Studio Opolis. Now here's where Sonic CD starts getting a little bit weird with its level design. This level wants you to know that you're its bitch right from the get-go. Take a look at this, I'm 20 seconds in and it's already pushed me back to the start of the level. Hey look, rings on the floor. So I actually managed to get to the future, not because I managed to maintain my speed, but because I used a cheap tactic to keep moving. This isn't rewarding. I don't want to have to resort to this kind of shit just to be able to use a core mechanic of the game. Where are my long rolling hills? I want to actually be able to control Sonic, please. And what's with these flashing lights combined with the harsh colors and complicated background? I've got no idea where the heck I'm going. I'm going to have a goddamn seizure. Look at Casino Night Zone. It's colorful and flashy, but I can tell where the hell I'm going because it's not overcomplicated. But not on this game. Hell, in Collision Chaos, there are even bits of the level which look like platforms, which you just go right through. What? Why include this in? It adds nothing but added confusion. This game looks like a Sonic game. This game feels like a Sonic game. But damn, dude, even Sonic Labyrinth had better level design than this shit. It's Sonic 1, 2, and 3. I always knew where I was meant to go. Maybe apart from in Sandopolis. But in this game, I can't even tell if I'm meant to go left or right. Okay, here's the boss. This one has you using the flippers on the sides to push Sonic up to the pinball machine in order to get to the top to hit Eggman. Oh goodness, where to start with this boss fight? Now, because the flippers are so powerful, the level stops you from getting to the top with one push by placing bumpers in your way. These bumpers sometimes send you back to the beginning, which is annoying, I mean, but it's not too bad, right? The pinball machine's pretty small after all. No! The hole here is too small! Sonic doesn't slow down on the flippers, let alone roll, so it's a goddamn game of chance at this point whether you're gonna get up or not! These flippers are in the worst fucking place! I can't get from here to here, it just can't be done! I had to get in from the second level! These flippers send you up way too fast, I've got no idea where the hell I'm gonna end up! And why are these spikes here, just to be a dick?! God damn it, even Eggman doesn't actually hurt you, he just pushes you around, leading to more aggravating moments, this boss fight sucks ass! The next zone is Tidal Tempest, and it has some more weird level design. Oh no! I'm about to fall down a hole! Well, my fault. I wasn't paying attention. Oh, oh, okay, or I could just get right back up straight away. Oh, that looks like a falling platform. Better jump over it. Nope. Well, I guess I can at least try to travel through time. Let's use our patented banana dash. And apparently you can also kill enemies. Hey, you learn something new every day. This game's got a fetish for springs, doesn't it? Okay, I've got this. I can run this whole stretch and make it to the past. Okay. Alright, so far so good. So far so... I give up. I, I just give up. No! Maybe I can't go to the past, but maybe I can hit the machine in the future! Let's do it! I've got the speed! I'm doing it! I... I give up. I give up, dude. Of course it's the bad future. Why wouldn't it be? Oh, the... Hi, Eggman. Yep. <coughs> Quartz Quadrant, one of the better levels. You won't let me down, right? All right, I'm almost there. Almost got it. Well, I've been going a really long time. Kill me. Just kill me now. Wacky workbench! Oh, well, okay, bouncy floor! Oh, oh, I'm frozen! What?! I to travel through a wall! Oh, okay, ow! Oh no! There's so much shit, there's so much shit that we would never stand for in a game today! And yet people still praise this game! It's not good! The, I mean, and it's only for one thing, the level design! The music is great! The, the, the themes are good! Sonic controls brilliantly! It, it's, it's the options! You get the, the sound options! Just why does the level design suck so much? It gets to the point where it's just completely unfair. Look here, you mean to jump across these flipping platforms to get over here. See any problems here? The goddamn thing never syncs up! The game will confuse you, 
Just so you have to do a long ass sick maneuver again. This isn't fun. I could go on. I have more jokes, more gripes with the game. There's more story to explain, extra options. You can play as Tails. Did I mention that? But I don't want to because the game sucks ass. If you want a classic Sonic experience, play Sonic 1, 2, or 3. Uh, hell, play Sonic 4 for all I give a shit now. Play Sonic Mania when it comes out. The best thing this game has got going for it is its music. If you're gonna buy anything related to Sonic CD, buy the soundtrack. The levels are cramped and cluttered, the boss fights suck, the colors are too saturated, the levels literally try to confuse you as, as, as to where to go. It's just not fun. The only people I could recommend this to is people who played Sonic CD as a kid and got really, really good at it. Other than that, you're gonna have a bad time. Actually, I recommended Sonic R and I can't even recommend Sonic CD. Kinda of think of it, I'd actually rather play Sonic 06 than this shit. I don't know, so many people like it, man. Like, was I playing the wrong game the whole time? Sonic's shitty level design adventure? Two battle? I'm done. I don't know what the hell I was doing at the end there. I was doing, I, I think I was thinking like, okay, I'll, I'll like put my hair up at the back so it looks like crazy and then, and then I'll put my hair over my, my head so I'm like, oh my god, this game absolutely destroyed me, but I just end up looking like some try-hard emo kid. Uh, who doesn't want to like fully commit, doesn't want to fully commit, I think I'm going insane. As I said before, this was the last video of the season, and I'm splitting it off here, because after this I did an, a little update video, which won't be going into any compilations, because it's an update video. And then after that, I started using Poppy, which has its own video, I'll maybe put it at the end of this one, uh, explaining why she came about into existence. She started appearing uh, on the videos, which means, at least for me, that's like where the where the new era started, I guess you could say. <laughs> if you're interested in seeing like a, maybe a Radical Soda Season 2 compilation, please let me know. Uh, I don't know how well this one's gonna do, and not that it really matters, to be honest, it's just a compilation video. Or maybe if you thought, uh, I shouldn't be talking throughout it because you just wanna see the videos, um, then that's fine too. I'm just doing this kind of as a test. I know other people don't bother talking in between them, and I understand completely why that's, why that's a thing, and uh, they don't. Uh, shove themselves in like some sort of egotistical freak. I'd like to thank all my Patreon members. Uh, they'll be scrolling on the screen here or here, I don't know. Uh, and uh, that's uh, a big help to me. I generally uh, stick myself into making really way too long videos for, quite frankly, games that don't need to be that long. Right now I'm working on a Pokemon Platinum video and that thing is taking a long while, like sword and shield style levels, so I'll see if I can maybe shorten that down. And honestly, looking at these old videos, as bad as they are, made me remember that making shorter videos gave me more time to work on things I want to, you know what I mean? Like, I do a video on Sonic Heroes, it's not four hours long, then I can move on to something else, and then I can move on to something else. And obviously YouTube doesn't like shorter videos, that's kind of a thing that they have, like sword and shield, best performing video of Doki Doki, Another best performing video, you know. But I think it could be nice for me in between these large videos to do just a few shorter ones in between. Just something where I can just express my thoughts, maybe crack a few jokes, but nothing too uh, uh, crazy. You know what I mean? After all, I would say definitely that uh, Pokemon Presents a Problem was my... Uh, it was the most fun I've ever had making a video. That one was so much fun. <laughs> anyway, uh, I'll keep at it. And... Oh, has this mic been slowly rising throughout the whole video? Gee whiz. <laughs> and if you would, please use my code uh, radical at gamersups.gg to get uh, gamersups uh, cups. And I should really have this stuff ready, but there's gamersups cups. Uh, they're nice drinks. I drink them every day, honestly. I'm not lying. You know what? I will grab it. I have a special steel one here. It's very nice. You know, regular ones. And, and you get the drinks, and the drinks are very good. They're all sugar-free. Uh, you can get caffeine free ones. It's all very good and you can get the shirts. Obviously, I'm wearing one uh, They sent me this. They're all very good quality and I recommend it I don't regularly do sponsorships because honestly, I don't believe in a lot of products that they're trying to sell to youtubers I don't think that I should be doing any sponsorships unless I truly believe in them and this is a company that I believe in and this isn't even a sponsored bit. I only get paid based on sales. So like, you know, you do uh, what the fuck?